It's time for Twink This Week in Google. Jeff Jarvis and Stacey Higginbotham both on today. We've got a great show. We'll, of course, talk about Facebook and fake news. Jeff has some simple proposals that finally I can get behind. We also have some great announcements from Google, including a big improvement to Google Translator and Google Auto and the Google Photo Scanner. We'll demonstrate. It's all coming up next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 379, recorded Wednesday, November 16th, 2016. Ixnay on the Eat Twig. This Week in Google is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you fresh, high-quality ingredients to cook delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. And by FreshBooks, the super simple cloud accounting software. It's giving thousands of freelancers and small businesses the tools to save time billing and get paid faster. Try it free at freshbooks.com slash twig. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show where we cover the latest news from Google, the Googleverse, the cloud, the media, the Facebook, the Twitter, and uh, anything else. And I say this at every show, anything else our esteemed panel wishes to discuss. Actually, thanks to Stacy Higginbotham, we do a lot more of IoT stuff, and I'm really thrilled. Stacy's beat now is IoT. She has the IoT podcast at iotpodcast.com. Stacy on IoT, and she joins us whenever she's not in town, which is a little strange. Hello, Stacy. Sorry about that, Leo. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just teasing you. You were in uh, the South Bay. You weren't even close to us uh, for... Uh, structure. How'd that go? It went really well. Um, learned a lot of fun things. And then after that, I went to Techonomy down at, uh, where was it? Half Moon Bay. Nice. How was that? that was fancy. Woo. Uh, and that was awesome. I actually saw a lot of really, really thought provoking presentations and learned more about Estonia and their digital ID program, which kind of sounds fun. I wanted to join that. Uh, I was in Estonia a couple of uh, months ago or a month ago and, uh, I just didn't get around to it, but you can apply online, and you, you get can. a you get a PGP key, uh, and a and a chip embedded in a chip card. It's an ID. It's not citizenship in Estonia. It's e citizenship. It's very interesting. And you can start a business there. I didn't realize that you can do everything there from your computer online. And it's, can you move there? You it, that would be physical world. Yeah. See, and I'm not sure I want to move there to be honest with you because Russia's right over the border. And she really did a bad job selling the country too. She's like, we, um, it's cold and dark, so we have yeah. nothing to do but yeah. program. I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. It's beautiful. My though. kind of place. Talon is a beautiful city. Hey, that's Jeff Jarvis, professor of hey. journalism at City University, hey. University of New York, or CUNY as it's known to the uh, in a, people in the environs. He is at buzzmachine.com, writer of many fabulous books, including what would, what would Google do? I almost said, what would public parts do? But that's <laughs> conflating two I different books. Behind my shoulder. <laughs> there it is. I see it. And it's on my shelf. All your books are on my shelf, too. Bless you. <sighs> so before the show, and those of you who are watching live know, we kind of discussed politics. Because I haven't seen Stacey since before the election. And uh, there is a little political news. Donald Trump is back to his Twitter account. For the week or so before the election, this, this story was, I don't know how, how accurate it is, that they had taken away. Some said his password, some said his phone. Jeff, you always said if it's, it's from Android, it's from uh, the president-elect. If it's from uh, yes. Apple, it's from his team. And it's all been from Android lately. And for the last three or the four, boss, so. th really criticizing. Yeah, he can, nobody can say no now, right? Really yeah. criticizing the New York Times. He's been going after the New York Times. Wait, what? Donald Trump is an Android user? I have to, let's pause for a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, he was an iPhone yeah. user until he called for a boycott of the okay, iPhone yes. after San Bernardino. And everyone, okay, yes, that's, and that was where I was like, yeah, he, he used switched to be to, an iPhone guy. He switched to, we believe, the Samsung Galaxy uh, S7. Now, I'm not sure, 
remember when President Obama took office, they they took away his BlackBerry. Mm -hmm. I don't know who well, they is. Who can do that, that to the president of the United States, the most powerful person in the world? There I think it's the through. Department of Defense, isn't it? Yeah, our Secret they, Service. They, yeah. they can't secure the channels. I mean, it makes sense. Oh, but, I hadn't thought. Well, he can, he can always do desktop Twitter, but he never, doesn't use a computer. Uh, I I will see what happens January 20th. But, uh, you know, this is one of the problems in general with government. And I've talked to people uh, who worked in the Obama White House. The systems are not very sophisticated or advanced. No. There. That's why, dare I say this, that's why Clinton had separate email because it was a screwed up system. She you said. Are looking, you are looking like like Steve Bannon, you know. The, is, the, you saw the scruff. Yeah, you got Yeah, you got it. No, you got to go one way or the other. Either shave it or get it longer. No, no, I haven't shaved in a week. There. I haven't shaved in a week. I said I won't. I'm not going to shave until a woman wins the White House. Oh, okay. Yeah, it turned out it was going to be a longer, about that. <laughs> a longer <laughs> beard than wow. I am. <laughs> You're going to be David Letterman before you know it. <laughs> Just don't can be trim. <laughs> no, I can trim. I just can't shave. <laughs> but right. You're right. I'd be ZZ Top at, at the rate we're going anyway. Um, <laughs> who knows? You know, I think Elizabeth Warren for uh, is my personal vote for 2020. Um, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, who is our new senator in California. Yeah. What do you What do you think of her? Because I'm not. I know I don't see her. I, I've, I've I've seen her at events and stuff, but so this will like. confirm everybody's belief about California. Our two candidates for senator. We're both women, both Democrats. Uh, and uh, so it was really like, uh, I don't know what, if you were a Republican, how you felt about that. It was you didn't have the choice because of the way the primaries work in the state. The top two vote getters uh, run against each other and uh, regardless of party. So uh, but Kamala Harris was secretary of state. I actually truthfully, I don't know that much about her, um, but she is one of four new female senators uh, who are uh, not white men. <laughs> the rest of it's white men. But she's one of four new female senators, which is pretty exciting, I think. Bodes well. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, anything to say? We're just going to watch with interest, as Mr. Trump uh, tweets. He has uh, now twice left behind the press corps. Um, and the press corps, as one would expect from a hive of bees is hopping mad Went you know that may not be a bad thing i'm just gonna throw mm. this out here okay so yes getting rid of your press corps bring it in the hilton so but george bush and 9-11 so that's the press corps argument is if something like that happens president reagan getting shot or uh, president right. bush reading to a kindergarten class during when 9-11 happens then there's no press pool coverage and it's pool coverage but, by the way not individual press coverage mm -hmm. but then you don't have to pander you can be like screw it this guy doesn't like us well, not well that's different him. that's different stacy yes i would argue that if he kicks you out of the of the press room mm -hmm. uh then go do your damn job but how do you do your job without access uh, there, everything there that happens access. in that press room is is shown to the world. We all see it. Right. That's stenography. That's not journalism. And, you know, I think the, uh, the normal reaction, my reaction is, well, he's going to have a steak. Let him have a steak in peace. I, I mean, I thought that was fine. But there should be, a, there should be, they're, they're standing outside. They need, they need a pool. I understand. They need a pool. The other thing is, to Stacey, to your point, is the, the travesty that I believe is the White House uh, uh, Correspondence Dinner. They should it's, stop it's, doing that. That's they should just stop. horrible. Yes, that's that's yeah. all about the access and 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 selling access. Basically, what celebrities do you bring and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think there'll be one thing that will be interesting. President Obama did not like press conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, held very few, relatively few of them. Uh, I'll be curious to see what happens in the next administration. Will there be more press conferences? Some, I think there'll be something we've never seen before, which is rallies. I was going to say, I think he's rally specific. He oh, someone asked what a press an, pool is, yeah. which is actually something to explain. What is pool coverage? We'll give it to Jeff. Mr. Journalism Professor? You just have yes. a small number of people. You have a TV and you have a, probably a print and a photographer, and uh, they are obligated to provide to all the rest of the press. Rather than have a, uh, every single network, every and nowadays it's even more important because you've got every blog, everybody with their own cameras and their own reporters, and you get a million people. They designate some uh, reporters and cameras, et cetera, that they will share. In fact, yeah, and I didn't know that the jargon was 
that uh, they get a signal there's a lid on it. We're not going to do anything tonight. We're staying home. You can go now. And so they don't stay 24 hours, but they're up to 24 hours. If the president's out, they're out. Yeah. And president it's elect is out. different different media organizations swap out their it's like yes. different people. Yeah. And then it's is it publicly available the pool coverage? Like I know for a while Gawker had a like they they actually ran the pool coverage, which was kind yeah, of yeah. I think you can get it if you're in the price. You, you can get the report and then share it. Yeah, so you, I mean, they're bore they're wonderfully boring. You know, uh, Trump had ketchup on steak. Same thing yes. happens in uh, Congress. It happens at about. rallies. Frankly, um, the pool coverage at a rally is that single camera on the candidate, and then which is other the one he yelled about. Right, he said you never showed the crowd. Well, the pool camera never was supposed to show the crowd. The networks have additional cameras that they can use to do that with and did. Um, I find, you know, look, I, I, my attitude is I, let's give it a chance, see what happens. But as we move closer and closer to January 20th, things are happening. And uh, it's, it's, it'll be interesting. And here's my, you know, from a tech point of view, our biggest interest is going to be uh, what happens to crypto, what happens to NSA surveillance, Yep. Um, what happens to network net neutrality? Net neutrality, the FCC in general. One of the things. Oh, the FCC today just said that they were not going to do any. They they were stopping their executive their, their orders. So until the new administration, that seems they, right. They've cleared the that and seems they did right. that for Obama. It is yeah. totally like legit. Yeah. I know people are upset because a lot of issues. Are yeah, what you don't yeah. want, and and I I suspect this, you know, Obama will do the same thing. You don't want a lot of lame duck posturing and stuff that just has you know that's just going to be retracted in uh, in january um but we'll we'll watch i does i don't does anybody know how quickly the fcc commissioners can be replaced in the uh, isn't there a schedule for that there is a schedule for them i don't remember who is on the schedule next and um, by the way uh only three commissioners can be uh, of the six can be, or of the five rather, can be of the same political party. So you have to have two Democrats and three Republicans or vice versa. I do think he gets to uh, replace the chairman. He does get to replace Tom Wheeler. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to look Wheeler at Wheeler was a Republican appointed by Obama and serving since November 4th, 2013. And ironically, a guy who I, everybody was really willing to, 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 to yes. I was president. I was so wrong about him. Yeah. I Cause he ended up wrong. doing, I think many good things for, uh, the people. Well, he tried. We'll see how long how many last. Yeah. But that's kind of the nature of uh, the pendulum. It swings back and forth, I think. Um, so we'll watch. I mean, those are going to all be, uh, things where we're going to be very interested in the encryption debate is, is hot and heavy at the same time. Remember that, uh, one of one of uh, candidate Trump's stands, and I hope he, that, that President Trump will uh, uh, follow it, is was to prevent the AT and T Time Warner merger. Oh, you know, he just said that he wasn't going to do that. All right, sorry, <laughs> Trump. Whiplash. AT and T Time. Uh, it's not Time Warner. AT and T. Um, oh, it is Time Warner. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, my brain stopped working for a second there. Um, he just said he's he, not going to uh, stop that, huh? Well, hold on. Let me make sure this is a legit news source. Well, okay. That's really going to be the subject of uh, this show, I think. Yes, yes. Um, I got some, yeah. Here's here's the Wall Street Journal. So this is a Seeking Alpha thing that came up. So hard to say. Uh, told supporters, yeah, block the deal. Ah, I've hit the paywall. Well, we'll, uh, we'll find out. You know what? I think the other thing is stuff doesn't going to move that fast. It's, I mean, it seems like, uh, uh, well, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, some, you know, of course, in during uh, campaign speeches, uh, uh, Trump said everything's going to happen on day one. But I think it's pretty clear that there's a lot to do and it can't happen all at once. Oh, the, OK. The story says that uh, Jeff Eisen, 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 Eisenach um said had said in the past that he was in favor of the oh. time order thing so we'll see what it happens. was not trump yeah that was a pretty clear campaign uh, promise not that yes that means much but that was a pretty <laughs> so clear. is the wall yeah yeah but you know okay anyway sorry uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> or fence it could be a fence so let's talk about that was, fake that news. was a that was an architectural technology commentary it wasn't a political commentary <laughs> yeah Right, like, yeah, 
The, right. The, how right. much was it going to cost? The like two hundred billion dollar wall, whatever. Um, let's talk about fake news. That's really the, probably the subject we should uh, go down the road of. Now, what I'm not interested in, and I think you see a lot of this, is oh, we lost. Why did we lose? It's your fault. I don't think that's relevant. So let's talk about it f from the point of view of going forward. First of all, and I think I'm very contrarian on this, so I'll be interested. I know what you guys might want to say here, so but I'll be interested in hearing it. Uh, what is f what is Facebook's obligation regarding fake news? Mr. Stacey? Mr. Jarvis, you, you may start. So I've written a piece about this and I just met today. I want to get your, I want to get both your pieces of advice about this, about what we could advise them uh, to do. Uh, so I met with somebody, um, I think someone won't mind me saying it. I went with John Borthwick at, at Betaworks, uh, where we want to make some tangible, specific suggestions. And we're working on that now, so I'm eager to hear yours. Uh, Facebook, I've done this spiel before on the show that I don't think Facebook is media. And we can argue about that and put that aside. Uh, I think that fa Facebook, I think Zuckerberg is wrong to say that it had no impact, wrong. It's, it's glib to say 99% of what you have on Facebook is, is, is true. How do you know? But the simple point of fact to me is that Facebook, with the help of media and with the help of its users, could improve the quality of discourse. And that is its obligation. And so around this idea of people spreading lies, falsehoods, and frauds, um, there are clear ways that they could help. And I, I do believe that some significant portion of the time, people share things that are mistaken and they don't know it. And if they knew it was mistaken, they wouldn't do it. So can we get in there earlier and help them with more information, with more signals to them? Say, you know, this comes from a site that's been around for about uh, 10 minutes. Do you trust it? Yeah, part of the problem with uh, um, Facebook, uh, it, it was purely economic, was that there were, there's a small town, 45,000 people in Macedonia. And I guess the teenagers talk amongst themselves. And they all came I up. I kind of want to go meet them. I know, very like, oh, smart. The hell, yeah. They all yeah. came up with this notion at once, which makes me think they kind of all talked about it, uh, to create political sites with, you know, names like World News Site uh, and put fake stories on there that would be, you know, clickbait. I mean, really, it's clickbait because the point of it all for them was if you click at the link and you go to their site, they make money on the ads. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of these, I mean, things like the Pope endorsing Trump and um, well, you know, what's funny is, uh, um, this actually happened to me. If you did a Google search, I'm sure they fixed it by now for what was the final vote count in the election. You'd find a fakes, a fakes. The first result was a fake site on Google, on Google, on news. Google, mm -hmm. not on news on Google, a fake site that said it was 60 Trump won 62 million to 60, uh, and which isn't true. And, but it looked true and Google even has this problem. So right, what so is so let's extend it past Facebook. Them. Does Facebook have obligations different from Google? No, I think I think I think in both cases, um, uh, we can help them help users know more before they share crap. They've now, done this before with clickbait. Remember, Upworthy used to dominate the Facebook feed, and yes. they did something. I don't know what to prevent that. They changed um, their algorithm, um, and yeah. they based it on I think time spent after people click through. I think Facebook has the means, like the technological means to create a flag. You know, like if you, if you go to a site and Google's like, hey, yo, this site might not be secure. Um, you could get a flag on stories that come from disreputable sources. And, you know, just a simple transparent, hey, we flag this story as being questionable. It would at least give you pause before you shared it, which would help. And that's that's not crazy. And they're not saying the the content, they, they, maybe it's they base it on where the site is. Maybe they prejudice themselves in favor of more, you know, longer standing media entities. Right. Maybe it's a site that has track record. Um, and then that brings back to Jeff's idea of funding like legitimate conservative media because then you'd have much more like, hey, this is 
this is a real organization and you'd be trusted. Because that's I, the, the fact that Facebook was concerned about a right wing backlash, I think, speaks well, this, volumes. I don't know. Artists. By the way, Facebook denies this Gizmodo story because Gizmodo said that they they had the ability to kill the fake news, but were afraid that it would kill mostly Republican I can favorite see that. posts. Be, well, because well, I mean, let, but let me Facebook it denies way. it out categorically. Yeah, I know, but 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 the reason that that's that's that not might be fake news itself. Say. It may it may be, but the point is that that on the right, Macedonian teenagers or whoever used Facebook in a way that media were too stupid to do. You know, I've long contended that we've got to be. You've heard my spiel about social. Well, tokens. it was clickbait. Media has been. Media has used clickbait no, 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 for no, no, since no, no, Facebook no. started. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that, Leo. I'm saying something very important. This is a big, important distinction. That's different. Clickbait, which we do do, Upworthy does. Every media company does it. Is come to my site where my ad is. Clickbait. You click on this. That's not what um, the the meme makers did. A meme is is self contained. Right? Occupy Democrats or, 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 or various of these things. It is self-contained. And people use it as a social token to pass around. So my contention is one thing that we in media need to do, forget Facebook, but we in media need to do is we need to learn that lesson. And we need to turn to turn out memes that are filled with facts here's, and journalism. Here's and the reality. problem that I have. Okay, this and this Gizmodo story is a perfect example. Fake news to whom? I mean, there's some stuff that's demonstrably factually false. But this Gizmodo story, Facebook denies. Right. So I don't think is I that think, does that mean it's uh, fake news or not? That's why I agree, with Leo. That's why and there's two things about this. One is that's why no Facebook shouldn't say this is fake because we don't want them to be the arbiter of what's fake and real and and false and true. Number two, I object strongly, except in extreme cases, to a blacklist. A professor at Marquette University put out a black put out a list of fake news sites and included in it the Onion. And included in it Breitbart. Now, I don't like Breitbart for a okay. second, but if Breitbart is next to the president for the next four years, people are going to be sharing news from There Breitbart. are people on Breitbart and who argue what they're doing is satire in exactly the same way that The Onion is right. satire. Right. So, so what, what, what I'm arguing for is not that Facebook censors, that Facebook kills, that Facebook labels as fake. What Facebook can do is give you, as Stacey just said, they can give you more information in this process. See, I want and, to be open to your proposal because in general – I think that it's not Facebook's problem at all, that if Facebook should just let people post whatever they want in the same way they can email you whatever they want, they can tweet whatever they want. It's the problem this is, like Google's problem was. So, because Google people say what they want to say, and yeah, it's, it's your quality. responsibility as a consumer of news to judge whether it's true or not, period. Right, but, but why, if why Facebook give them help? helps with that, that I mean, exactly. that's we're not saying Facebook should censor. We're just saying, hey, help people out. Just like I get a little security icon if some sites protected with HTTPS, right? So if it's got SSL, I see the security icon. If I see this flag, I say, oh, well, maybe I should go look into this more. I mean, the input, that all that should do is say, oh, let me Google this and see what, has anyone else said it? And yeah, so part of- But you can do that now, or you can go to Snopes, or you can- Well, yeah, okay, but you're not gonna Google that. everything, that becomes- Horrifying. Right. I mean, so do something for me. Go to. I think the Google part of the reason fake news works is because people read it something they want to believe, and it is, they like but it. You don't. And but they, you don't share stuff that's demonstrably or even yeah, how possibly often have false. I done that? I shared. There was a there was a post this week where somebody shoved a Trump protester down the stairs at a mall, and I shared it. And it turned out it had nothing to do with politics. The guy who did the shoving has has problems. And everybody, you know, said that, and I pulled it back immediately. Now, what I wish I could do is send a note to anybody who read it, and say, "Oh, I shared the wrong thing." All I can do now is kill it. Oh. I can't correct it. I can't do anything else. There's other things to do. Um, do something for me. This is going to be a little controversial. All right. Uh, Google search Daily Stormer, which is a uh, white supremacy site. Yes, exactly. So when you do that. So I say the world's most goal. It says the world's most goal-oriented Republican website. And Google pulls up the innards of the site, which it doesn't do with all sites. It does it with kind of sites that have enough traffic. So the first thing is Jewish problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that helps you. So this is the kind of help you'd like. Well, no, I'm. I'm. That's what I'm asking. I. I when I. I mean, I think the next today, entry, which is the is Wikipedia kind of entry for it, which says it's an American neo-Nazi and white supremacist news and commentary site, 
which is the very second thing and still above the fold in most pay, most screens is probably even more useful. Yeah, so I'm not sure what to do. No, actually, John and I were a little appalled that Google pulled this out. Well, wait first. a minute, but they do the same thing. If I do New York Times, they pull out stuff too. Well, but they don't do it with all sites. If you do it with some other sites, they, you, it's only a Are they trying size, to tell but... us something about the New York Times? Uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> um, I get the same pullout. I get so it for CNN. Yeah. I mean, are right. you sure that Google's doing this to say, hey. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. No, that Leo, I'm, that's what I'm saying. No, I, I, I'm not, you're presuming. I, I don't know that I like this. I think this is, this is giving them more space and more. Oh, you're saying um, it's not a big enough site to do that with. Like well, if kind I, of it. It's, and it's a, it's a, it's, I think we can call this safely a hate site. Yeah. Um, and, and the hate. If I search for problems. Twit, for instance, they don't pull out content from. Right. So Twit. they could, they get a special treatment that, that pulls out their content. No, I don't think this is good to do. Okay. So this what? is not the solution. No, 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 no. Uh, let me go over a list of some things because I want to get your reaction, right? One is 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 trying to spread the ethic of verified sources, right? And, and do you think verified sources has helped Twitter? No. Do you think there's any any benefit that it could be that only that if Twitter's well? I mean, one of the things Twitter does, I don't do it, but it lets you look at only verified tweets. Right. Um, I mean, I guess it, that could be the way to do that. Yeah. Even verified people are wrong. I mean, I'm verified, but I've I've had See, this is, tweets every now and then. This is to me the problem here is that this is there, there. It isn't so black and white as we would like it to be, and it really bothers me to say it's Facebook's burden to do this. I think I'm not saying it's Facebook burdens, Leo. I'm saying that that listen, when Facebook, when when Google had crap and spam coming up, what do they do? They hired Matt Cutts to say improve the experience of value of Google. I'm saying that nobody should be stopped from posting what they want to post. If they want to post, apart from hate speech, they want to post a, a dumb, stupid, wrong meme. That is their that is their privilege and right to do so. And by the way, we can't know. Maybe they're going to make be making fun of it. They have their reasons to post it. They want to post examples of dumb, stupid, wrong things. But all Stacy and I are saying is, if people posted wrong stuff inadvertently less. Facebook would be a better experience. It's better for Facebook and better for the users. Well, let's take we'll this stop. back to the days of Upworthy. It's true. If people would stop posting that gosh darn Upworthy crap. So what did Facebook... Well, and that finally they did, and they did. Facebook did people, it. So well, part of the also, argument, no, users, part of the problem is... said, fool me once, fool me twice, George Bush quote. People, yeah, people didn't like it. So I think the work difference work. here is that if, if... Look at it as a customer service problem. If you're sharing and you have all this fake news, what if people don't like it, giving them tools to identify it a little bit more easily would be beneficial well, for them. What Facebook's algorithm tells it, and assuming that Facebook is fully algorithmic and not human, uh, what Facebook's algorithm is designed to do is is optimize for stickiness, right? To keep you using the site Right, more. but they could optimize so for something else. They're optimizing for what people like. So they're, okay, that is not necessarily true. They're optimizing for what people click on. People don't always click on stuff they value well, What or other like. signal do you want? Do you want to read Leo, their minds? Have you well, ever, so no, Leo, have you ever posted signal. something? Have you ever retweeted or shared something that you found out 10 minutes later was wrong? Probably, I don't remember. Yeah, I've done it all the time. Well, I don't do it all the time. I'm pretty careful. I don't do it all the time, I've, but it's happened. <laughs> well, I mean, it's happened to me more than I wanted to happen to me. Put it that way, right? I would appreciate as a user. So, so I've given the example on the show before. I'm sorry, Stacey, I over talked to you. Um, you did. I'm sorry. I apologize. Would we'll finish your point first. I got excited. You go got me too excited. I know. Go, right. go ahead. All right. I'm, okay. I apologize. I shouldn't do that. Um, I gave the example on the show some weeks ago where there was the picture of Justin Trudeau and he was kissing a politician and it looked suspicious to me. And I started mousing over and. When you moused over, the related content was uh, um, BuzzFeed saying this is a fake picture people are passing around and Snopes debunking it. Now and that helped you. Yes, it did. It did. And and it, let's say let's say that that I was going to share that photo. If Facebook just simply said you might want to see these other things about this photo, and I'd say, oh, thank you, Facebook, for stopping me from embarrassing myself sharing this thing. I can't see how you object. To I'm that. not against. I'm not against that. Okay, Stacey, I'm sorry. I apologize a hundred times. No, no, that's that's a hundred a hundred times. I want a thousand. Well, I'm, try, I'm trying to get myself a hundred. I'm just going to push him yeah. out of the show. It's all yours. <laughs> no, it's it's all gone. Well, I just 
I wanted to make the point. (laughs) (laughs) Jeff, you're still talking. You're still talking, man. Uh, I wanted to make the point that the algorithms, we have this sense that they're unbiased. Like I'm hearing you speak about this, like, oh, they've optimized for stickiness. But well, that's the point. And they can optimize for a better user experience. I don't know where they get that information from. From users? From, from users. Media. No, but they're using the signals us, they have. Clicks, uh, time Okay, spent. but they have they have more clicks. Think about how Facebook reacts every time they roll out some privacy infringing feature and everyone gets upset and they're like, <laughs> oh, bring out, roll out the Zuckerberg apology. I mean, <laughs> if people were upset enough about this and it became, it was framed as a customer service issue, and it may not be for the rest of the population. It's an issue for me, it's for Jeff, for people who might feel embarrassed to say wrong things on Facebook. But if it is actually an issue, then Facebook should deal with it, if only because it will make the experience better. Yeah, I I accept uh, Jeff's proposal that maybe there's additional information. Your mouse hovers over something and it pops up a window or something. I I, I accept that. I I really dislike the notion that Facebook somehow knows better than its users and and needs to no, it's protect the people. people. It's page rank. That. Right. It's like so page rank. Give us some more information. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I, does okay. Facebook need a Matt Cuts to stay ahead of people who are gaming their structure? Um, so so this is the thing, is I see headlines like this. This is from today. Zuckerberg says Facebook will crack down on fake news. That, that That's not what... Your proposal doesn't sound like a crackdown. No, no. I worry no, about I'm a crackdown on fake news. Empower the users. Yeah. Facebook doesn't want to do that. I don't want them to do that. Uh, let me ask you this question. So Facebook on January 15th, 2015, January 20th, 2015, added the ability to report false news. Can you find that for me? Sure. Find, find, I report something I've written as false news. No, please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> go to the almost last step. Where is that? Let me find it for you. I'm looking. Uh... This is this January twentieth, ironically, no, 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 of, don't find of the last story. year. No, no, no. no, no but I'm going to look at the. I'm, I'm going to look at the. Oh, uh, no, now you cheated. I wanted you to go find the way. Oh, oh you're as saying. A user. I get. We, okay, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm going to go look. to my Facebook feed now real quickly and, tell me and see I how I would like, report that. So let's exactly. say uh, this story I'm reading. Scoble. Oh, let's do Scoble. Let's yeah. do why I'm happy that Trump won. So normally, what I do is I click this down arrow. I can hide, post, unfollow Robert. Hide from Prince Ia report post. There we go. Uh, it's annoying. I think it shouldn't be on Facebook. Let's continue. Why should it not be on Facebook? It's no, harassment. It's hate there. speech. It's something else. Let's see. Is it? It just. I think it's an unauthorized. Nope. It's not there. It's not there. Well, where is it? because so, that's the so logical. I don't know. It's yeah. still supposed to be there, but the point is they buried it twenty levels. It's annoying. Down. How about this one? It's annoying. Nope. Nope. It's not there. <laughs> So if we just made it, if they just made it easier for users to say, "Hey, I looked at this and it's fake," now oh, you know, Facebook oh does maybe 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 that. I got it. It's annoying or not interesting. Message Prince Ia to resolve this. Nope. Nope. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're right. It's not immediately obvious to give signals. That's one. Yeah. So so Stacey, make it easier for the users to give Facebook right. signals, and Facebook can judge them. Maybe that's know, the best can, way to do game. that. The other way I think is media can say, you know, hey, Facebook, we went to the effort. We called, we got on the phone, we called up, we found out this is not true. The Pope did not do this. Um, and and Facebook trusts that media outlet and says, okay, New York Times, if you say so, we're not going to kill the Post, but we're going to make sure we tell people, hey, the New York Times might want you to know this. In both yeah, cases, you empower the users both ways, Stacey. You also then put a burden on real reporters to debunk all this crap. Um, well, and I can which, also see uh, people using this to uh, espouse a political point of view. Oh, they'll sure. game the system, I could, certainly. You know, Facebook and, loves to and touch we've, that. I mean, this is what the problem Dig ran up against and ended up putting him out of mm-hmm. business, uh, is these kinds of reputation-based systems can be gamed and rigged. Facebook is but in a Stacey, difficult situation because oh, everybody wants to game Facebook. And I don't think they're taking it I think some people on Facebook are taking it seriously and others are not. Stacey, let me go back to your question about, about putting that burden on media. 
Uh, I actually, I think that's media's job. And I'm not saying they have to do it to all the crap that's there. But if a substantial number of people believe X, isn't it a reporter's job to say, well, I picked up the phone and I found out. And let me tell you, um, you should know that's wrong. Yes. That's what we do. But right? yes, that is that is totally true. My, my concern is we get into these false equivalencies easily in media. And yes. I, I worry, like, if there are enough people who say something, it automatically kind of becomes true in some ways, like, God help us, Dr. Wakefield and his vaccination efforts um, or his anti-vaccination oh, so stance. This is a good example. So, by the way, it's contro it's still controversial uh, because some people believe that uh, uh, childhood vaccinations cause autism. The man who created the first study later admitted he'd faked the results, but ever since that kind of set off a shockwave of people who don't know that he retracted it. Um, I don't even know if you could call it factual. Enough people are, are adamant. I have friends who are adamant that it's true, and they have anecdotal evidence, right? Well, my kid had four shots in a row and got a fever. Um, is that That's fake That's actually a common news? side effect. Well, I'm just saying uh, it's complicated. But can you That's, give people and, more information? And had you given people more information... Would that have, because believe me, if if you're a, an anti-vaccination crusader, you've been given a lot of contrary information. Had, has that slowed it down? Um, has I this worked? Maybe a little. I don't know. I, like, I. The, the fact that the guy who wrote the study retracted it didn't slow it down. I don't think true. your neighbor is saying, you're full of it, is going to slow it down. <laughs> so, I. Okay, I, yeah, I so like the idea. Really powerless. Ah. No, no, you're not. We're not powerless. But uh, you, okay. Well, some would argue you're powerless to change people's minds. I, I, no, I, if you believe that, then then just shut down the halls of journalism yeah, why, and education. Why would you have a job? I mean, yeah. if you're read um, the Righteous Mind by a professor named Jonathan Haidt. Uh, very interesting book. We've had him on Triangulation, um, and he talks about how reason and intuition work and intuition is instant and for good evolutionary reasons it's got to be uh and reason follows he likens um intuition as the elephant that reason is riding reason has a hard time controlling intuition people make up their minds and then most often come up with reasonable explanations for why they believe what they believe. This is why we educate it's all people. ad hoc. Well, but it's all, well, yeah, okay. I mean, I believe this in education. Why we, yeah, you believe in education. I'm, and journalism I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible. Like it isn't impossible. Obviously, you can change minds. It's a, it's a harder than you think, and it is generally not done with reason. He's got a, it's a, it's a compelling it's book. Done it's with often empathy. done with empathy. Hey, that was exactly in sync. You guys are empathetic. There we go. I mean, but no, and that's why I, I'm not going to go there. Um, the challenge is. Thank you. The news industry is not designed to be empathetic. We're designed right, to report right, right, on facts. Right. And I think it's a huge, instead of talking about fake news, I would think that as an industry, we would talk more about how to convey empathy into tell people other people's stories in a way that makes them compelling. Um, and draw I, I those lines for people. On. I mean, that's... It is, but it's it's relegated to the feature section. Right. It is limited in scope. Helicopter in, helicopter out. You don't really stay in the community. But, understand but this the community is part of a... Community. I mean, look, what we're talking about with Facebook is challenging because Facebook is neither media nor a common carrier. It's something new mm -hmm. that yes. the internet has given us. And media itself is no longer reportage presented in a who, what, when, where, why fashion. It is something new. It has to be something new. And all of this is kind of precipitated by the Internet era, uh, the way people share information. I mean, you know, let's, let's go back uh, 50 years, a pre-Internet era. There was plenty of fake news. You know how it was shared? Your neighbor told you. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, you know, and in fact, communities, geographically proximate communities often have very similar beliefs and they reach consensus 
in a way that has nothing to do with the internet. It has to do with what you heard down at the cafe or at the mall and what your neighbor told you. And so I think that what we're trying, what we're really grappling with is a new world in general. I yeah. like your plan of saying, let's have more information. At least give Some you the will information. Ignore it. Some Mo will ignore I would it. submit most Some would ignore it because, again, reason... We don't know until we try. Well, but, okay, give so, them tools. Now, that's to the empathy point. That's to the empathy point. Now, Stacey, um, one of my, we, we had this conversation in our social journalism program last night. One of my, one of my students, one of our students, uh, under Professor Kerry Brown, uh, had this great spiel where he said his, his, he has an aunt. You know, we all have an uncle or an aunt. He has an aunt. And, and the aunt came in and said, why are you always talking about how, you know, black people have problems? It's a white guy. And he said, well, because they, there's, a, there's a problem of justice here. Just, uh, you know, all lives matter. And she said, and he said, don't you understand why that's offensive? No. So he went through four hours with her on Facebook, kind of, you know, in public to, the, to his friends and family. Four hours going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And, the, and finally, at the end, there was a breakthrough moment. And she said... Oh, I never thought about it. Okay. okay. But for every time that happened. I know. Well, <laughs> there are 25,000 times it well, just descended into a, a flame war and nothing happened. Well, it just solidified, if anything, solidified but, but, people's Leo, opposing you know, wait, points but, but, of view. What I'm, saying, I'm agreeing with you. Um, this doesn't scale, right? Yeah. No he, he can't spend four so, hours with everybody. It's an outlier. But the question but it is possible. Okay, so then the question is, how do you create an online platform that promotes empathy, that promotes actual conversations? Facebook. And Facebook can be that platform, and even Twitter can be that platform in the comments well, and other okay. I agree. sections. I Here's so a potential of, problem. So somebody in the chat room said, this election was about not having empathy, and I would disagree. The issue was not not having empathy. It was about who do you have empathy for? Uh, do you have empathy for uh, the other, or do you have empathy for uh, middle-class Americans who've fallen from grace? And, it, it, and, and really, a lot of the anger coming from the Rust Belt was anger that, hey, you're all, all worried about these, you know, Latinos, mm -hmm. when, what about me? I'm not, you know, come on. And, uh, and, I, and you know what? That's a, there's no question there's empathy there. The debate is over who, empathy for whom? Well, and yes, yes, and 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 how? I mean, I, this is where I've argued that we in journalism don't listen well. We've got to get out there and give empathy. I think this is this is absolutely critical. So, Lee, ask, I'm, I'm trying to get you to specific suggestions. Let me try another one on you. I think the by, trendy. By the way, box, I will. By the way, you did win me over because I was dead set against Facebook doing anything, and I do like the idea of uh, just providing more context. It only works. That's really. harmless. Works. This is Stacy's point. One of Stacy's points too. It only works if it's built around improving the experience of Facebook for the user, if it's shoving things down people's throat, if it's trying to censor for the sake of other agendas, no. But if it improves the experience, if we can if we can stipulate that the experience of having crap at you that's all wrong and stupid all day is a bad experience and you can improve that, that's what sells it to Facebook, that's what sells it to the right. user. So Stacy, uh, this Thanksgiving, when you sit down with friends and family, and many of us will, on Thursday, actually, we've decided not to not to go somewhere <laughs> to avoid be, this this very issue. <laughs> I will be reporting and doing the show from my parents' house in Houston. So you, um, I, I think there will be a great many uh, oh, yeah. uh, heated discussions. So how can empathy help help us, Stacy? How can empathy help us here? Wait, are you asking me this because I'm a woman? No, because uh, you're the one who brought <laughs> up the word. This is your position. I'm, you're defending uh, it. So I use this all the time with my mom. Um, I can't use it with my dad because he doesn't, he just shuts down when we talk about politics. Right. But it's, it, it's, it's understanding the other person's point of view. So when my, when my mom and I talk about Trump or policies, you know, she actually brings up a lot of really legitimate questions. So when I talk about, I have a, I, I am against uh, religious exemptions for birth control. And when a pharmacist doesn't do their job and doesn't give someone, deny someone like plan B, that's a, I feel like that should be illegal. And she, it, it basically, when I'm talking to her, she, she brings up these really good points and I'm actually willing to listen. And basically 
it's an individual rights thing for her. So I understand her position now. Whereas beforehand, I was like, these people are all evil and against women. I didn't really think that, but. Um, That's exactly what Jonathan Haidt says. And right. it's what you both came up with at the same time, um, which is you can't reason somebody out of their beliefs. Uh, you have to start where they are. If you want yes, to see this exactly in action. that's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. I wrote, I didn't write I wish I had written. Um, the New Yorker had an article about Obama's uh, negotiations in Cuba. And it was this entire conversation played out as world politics. And it was a really fascinating kind of, it, it was a really good article. And it was really fascinating to put it on, the, like to view Obama through this lens. And it kind of crystallizes how he dealt with people in conflict. And it made me feel, I think, a little bit more sad because I don't see Trump so far exhibiting that kind of empathy. And I really think in a world fraught with disruption and globalization, we're going to need that more than ever. And so I would love to see Facebook, Twitter, any of our tech people try to promote this. But I also think that tech has a role to play because Tech is fundamentally really unempathetic. Uh, it's our, our leaders don't think of others. It's right. not diverse. It is mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. much drink the whole drink the Kool Aid and right. it, I don't know. It, it's very fun. Even I, though I, it I'm cares about users, Stacy, right? It says they say they care about users. Users first. You're right. And how can you? What? How can you? And all this work talk about design thinking. I mean, design thinking is all about user center and all about empathy. We hear that a lot there, but I think you're absolutely right about the tech industry. Uh, it's not, how can you put out good products if you don't empathize with the people using them? So I think that's where social media really, the promise of social media and the promise mm -hmm. of the internet in general was to help us hear other voices and to uh, democratize media because media pre-internet was not democratized it was very much uh you know uh, an oligarchy um and it is certainly more democratized and ironically as a result there's more fake news uh yeah. than ever before i mean you could argue the national Enquirer has been around a long time the the star and the uh, there was a wonderful news of the world was just all fake news it was a fake news oh, that newspaper was awesome and who didn't love the it. news of the world right? who didn't love the bat baby yeah yeah so um, there's nothing new about fake news. But Can I, I ask you guys some, a few specific proposal questions for your reaction? Certainly. All right. So uh, this is, again, with a conversation with, uh, with John Borthwick. Um, one, so the trending box sucks on Facebook, in my view. And, and they've tried to fix it with people. And it doesn't work. And, they tried to, and, and trending to me is useless on Facebook. It, 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 it's meaningless. What I would want, but, but why is it there? It's there to give you something that's not going to come across in your feed, John said. I think he's right. It's there to say, oh, don't miss this. That's out there. Um, and curating it is meaningless because that becomes like media one-size-fits-all product. And trending, this is what everybody's looking at. Well, so what? I can find that elsewhere. I don't think that's very interesting. What if there were an orthogonal box? You are always hearing from these people. You never hear from these people. If you would like to, make it optional. If you would like to, here are some things you're not likely to see. Right, it's the it's a it's an explicit filter bubble cure. No, 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 no. It's it, what he's asking is actually something a lot of people are thinking about, which is how to code for serendipity. Right. And you will hear this. God, if you go to any tech conference where we talk about algorithms, serendipity comes up like <laughs> in the second second really? hour. It's like, oh. Um, but it's a legitimate thing, and people are thinking about it. The question is how. To scale serendipity is ridiculously challenging because you're either going to pull stuff at random um, or you're going to pull trending. So let's think about ways that we can actually bring that into people's lives in a way that promotes, I guess, legitimate news, but also things that they wouldn't see and might actually find interesting. I don't know. I mean, that's a tough problem that people are actually working on. Right, and so and so, uh, trending doesn't do it. John showed me a, a, a company that Betaworks has called Scale Model, which is really looks neat, uh, where you put in my name and you see what the world is around me, right? And then you see what's missing. 
And that's an easy analysis for, we've seen this a million times, where you're all talking over here, and there's also a conversation over there. Would you like to hear a little bit of the best of over there? Mm. Um, that's one idea, right? right. So here's, here's another question. Uh, should you be able to edit tweets? Part of the problem with tweets is you have it's binary. It's it's put it out there, or kill it. Yeah, there's a there's a technical issue with that. Of course, that once a tweet flies free, it's hard to pull it back. You can edit it in some context, but remember, a lot of people are reading Twitter and third party apps and so forth, and you can't easily modify it that way. Right? So, could you have a structure where? By tweet is held for 30 seconds. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, that's one, but you no, know, it's more likely. Oh, people, 10 people just told me I was full of crap and they're right. I don't, I don't think you can edit tweets. I think you could absolutely, I mean, we do what we do now, which is release a second tweet that says, whoops. Yeah. Delete and release a tweet or don't delete. And then now it would be interesting if you could post retroactively flag a tweet. So if not edit it, but just flags a wrong tweet. In so the, the, I, I think Twitter rejects idea. that because it, there, because there's a fire hose. There's all sorts yeah. of places they can't go back and change. But, so right. but no, just think of Twitter as like you've it's it's. OK, so here's another idea. Here's a different idea. So let's say that um, uh, and you can work this either way from the sender or the recipient. I'm not sure which way to think about it, but basically I get to subscribe to corrections. I, uh, uh, Leo, you, you tweeted something. I retweeted it. I thought it was wonderful Then you say, cause you're a responsible and decent man. Oops, I was wrong. And I don't know that. And I don't happen to see your second tweet. So I don't tell my readers that Leo was wrong and full of shit, and I right. remain full of shit. Right. What if there were a structure where basically if I retweeted it, I get a notification. You get to send me a notification that says, oh, hey, uh, Jeff, uh, you might want to ixnay on that uh, eat say. Um, tweet say? No, tweet. tweet, tweet. Anyway. Eat tway. Um, eat tway. Eat tway. Thank tway. you. Uh, <laughs> ixnay on that eat tway. Uh, show title. Um, uh, right? And, and, and you're informing me. And, and then I know from you, boy, Leo is an upstanding guy. I trust Leo more because Leo will send out a correction if something happens. Thank you, Leo. And I will in turn, anyone who retweeted me, I'll say, <laughs> or go out on a or whatever. What do you think of that? What if there's kind of a subscription service for oh, uh, corrections? That would create a tsunami, an additional tsunami <laughs> of tweets. Can you imagine? Uh, but <laughs> Can we just, can people just use their critical facilities? And t well, I don't, you just told me a few minutes ago, <laughs> no, they can't. <laughs> I think with, they don't want to. Well, no, they, but I can't. So it. it can't be forced upon them, is what I said. And uh, I just, we should just. I think we should just accept this for all it is. And all right, I've got one more question. All right, all right. You'll be very glad when I'm through with them. I'm sure you're relieved right now. <laughs> um, like no more well, fake no, news. I've, I've got two. I'm, I'm, I'm alive. Oh, Jeff. Uh, one is uh, <laughs> once something's determined to be irresponsible fake news, you just know it. It's like pornography. You know it when you see it. But why do the Macedonian kids do this? Because it, 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 the story says they didn't know, they didn't care left or right. They don't give a damn. No, no. They in fact, they tried funny. it on the left and it didn't work, so they, they stuck they with it. The right. right, right. And so you find out this stuff is made up just to game the system. It's awful. But why do they do it? Because they make money. Should there be an ethic of pulling advertising from something that? Well, they is, already did. Google has just, has announced that they are no longer agree going to that? allow AdWords on. Uh, so fake do you agree news with that? sites and uh, Facebook has said you can't use fake fake news in uh, in advertising. Uh, yeah, I agree, do you with, agree that. with that. The problem okay. I still have with Isn't all the same of this slippery is slippery slope. Though, yes. What is fake news? I mean, um, right, right. Uh, you know, somebody in the chat room said the Catholic Church has been disseminating fake news for millennia. <laughs> well, if your father well, Robert Ballas there, you may disagree. Uh, Wait a second. Wait a second. Get get ready for for your drinking game. I'm, I'm reading a book right now about uh, a brand Luther. So Gutenberg comes up and what <laughs> Gutenberg objected like to were all the relics. It's water. It's a good thing. Aren't you, aren't you glad? One of the relics that, that Gutenberg locked up and sent away was a vial containing Mary's breast milk. Fake news of its time. Right. Right. And the church made quite a bit of money in a pre AdSense yes, era. Yes. Selling, <laughs> selling relics. <laughs> Indulgences. Indulgences relics. and relics. Wait a second. What is this Gutenberg drinking thing? <laughs> oh, you're, is this you're spare. Is this another thing that I, I'm like, it's pre that I missed the memo on? Yeah, no, it's pre Stacy. So it used okay. to be in the old days of this show that uh, anytime Jeff <laughs> mentioned Chipotle or Gutenberg, because 
Jeff, and I agree with him. In fact, I used to say these in my speeches all the time, you know, compare, you know, the Gutenberg era to the modern yeah. time. Jeff's even written a book called Gutenberg the Geek. So, uh, and then where was it? The other one was Achtung Reitzung or whatever. Uh, uh, Leistung, Leist Schutzrecht. Leistung Schutzrecht, which is, which is something. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> which is, it has to do with the German publishers and, oh God, you don't want to so, get oh, it. Oh God, okay. Jeff's doing it again. It's a drinking game. Yeah. It's a, so you're supposed to drink. What, it's, it's a joke. Nobody would do that yeah. or they'd be on the floor before the show was Because I talk about Gutenberg so much. <laughs> I hadn't heard it until this moment, so yeah. you prepared, leveled off. <laughs> All right, last, now, now really the last, last point. point. So if you go to, uh, if you want to look up a meme like, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Janet Yellen and George Soros in that commercial that was the dog whistle commercial. If you go to Wikipedia and look up Soros Yellen, it doesn't know what to do. If you go to Google and search for Soros Yellen, it starts to explain the memes to you. Is there, a, is there a meme repository that would be beneficial that when you don't know what's going on with the meme and you want to find out where it comes from, um, uh, that there's a place to go? Oh, BuzzFeed. Well, there's, and there used to be a bunch of these. Um, I think they were acquired and shut down. There was a, I used to keep up on memes because I'm so old and out of touch I used to keep up with the kids. There was a site with, with uh, Know Your Meme. Is it still around? Isn't oh, yeah. Know Your Meme's still around, is isn't it? it? Yeah, well, that's what that's for. Um, <laughs> but I just, I mean, you can, if you see a meme, you just Google it and you're like, what the heck is happening? See a meme, oh. say a meme. Know Your Meme is Know Your Meme on Twitter. Yeah, They're Know still Your there. Meme. Oh, there it is. It's oh. a site dedicated to documenting internet phenomena, viral videos, image macros, catchphrases, web celebs. And more. I think it's just become like yet yeah, another just, yeah, just place. Another crap site. Yeah, yeah. It is. Um, I th you know I think was it Ben Ha who started this of uh, the uh, cheeseburger. I can has cheeseburger. I can has cheeseburger. I can has cheeseburger. Or did he buy it? He's involved in some way. I feel like he bought it. Uh, <laughs> he bought everything. All right. I'm All right. Now. Is everybody calmed down a little bit? Part of the thing I have to say. That it, from the outside, and I'm in the bubble, so I'm I have to use empathy to see this, is that <laughs> it it probably looks like this is a very bubble conversation. Uh, that these this is not really important to anybody outside the bubble, right? Well, but but I went well. Uh, I was on uh, Today Show yesterday morning, NBC Nightly News yesterday evening, probably CBS Evening News tomorrow, CBS Sunday morning and Sunday, BBC. Uh, media is going nuts for it because I love they love blaming Facebook for something. Yeah. Oh my god! But the media is not like real people. No, the media mean, is a bubble. <laughs> right, but they're presenting this story to the world as if it matters. Yeah. Well, that's because we we love nothing more than talking about ourselves in the media. Yeah. We, we yeah, just, it's a little navel, so navel gazing y, isn't it? Yeah. By the way, speaking of the Twitter, they have now suspended uh, Richard Spencer's account. Um, and some other alt-right accounts. Yeah, people are complaining that this is too little too late. Or um, too much too soon. Well, <laughs> um, depends on who's talking. Richard Spencer says this is corporate Stalinism. I am alive physically, but digital, digitally speaking, there's been an execution squads across the alt-right. There's a great purge going on. And they're purging people based on their views. It does feel a little bit like a reaction to Trump's election is like, okay, well, uh, let's get rid of all these guys. I mean, Spencer's been on Twitter for a long time. Um, also, uh, Pax Dickinson, Paul Town, Ricky Vaughn, John Rivers. Were they suspended for an actual action like, oh, that tweet crossed the line? Well, this is, this is the Milo debate right. once again. But if it's uh, reactionary, I mean, it could be Twitter admitting some sort of role in what happened um, or an influence that it does not want they, to power, that it does not want to have. They and do then, have a right. rule against hate, right, on Twitter. That's one of the rules you can't. Yeah, but getting the, keep proving hate. What is, is hate? Just, yeah. I mean, Fake hate. Well, and that's what some of these guys in the alt-right, like Richard Spencer, I mean, he's always smiling when he's saying this hateful stuff. It's like. Yeah, I'm joking. Come on, I'm tweaking your chain. I'm yanking your chain. I grew up, you know, uh, at Yale. Um, I, I, 
I've always like wanted to know what the other side was thinking. So I would go to these conservative events. You would. They, yes, you would. The, 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 there was a thing there in Yale called the That's political good. union, which was great. It had each, there was the party of the right, the POR. There were all these different groups. And there was a group of, of uh, arch conservatives, William F. Buckley conservatives. In fact, Buckley was kind of a prototype for this, who would say things with a smile and like, I'm joking. But you always felt like there was that they meant it. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. But they knew it was provocative and perhaps even racist or anti-Semitic. And by smiling, they gave you the impression. I'm just joking. Well, Trump even did oh. this, didn't he? A few okay, times. Okay, this is like every guy talking to a girl and insulting them about anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. right. Uh, just kidding. You can't take a joke. So I called you a. Can yeah. you say the B word? Or, no. Or it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> or it's where when somebody, when I, you know, when I was a kid, people used to say, no offense, but, and I always yeah, knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want to hear the offensive thing they were going to say next, which was usually an insult. No offense, but you have terrible body odor. No offense, <laughs> mind you. <laughs> uh, and they would say, well, I'm just speaking the truth, but I didn't want to offend you. The Southern Poverty Law Center said that uh, they had asked Twitter to remove more than 100 accounts of white supremacists who violated Twitter's terms of services. So they may have simply used Twitter's built-in reporting tool. And Twitter may have just looked at the account and said, yeah, you're right. And I mean, I don't know exactly what happened. But I, I agree this is a slippery slope, too. Mm-hmm. Well, so what do you think about the, this? This is on the rundown elsewhere, but but so this the, the the Twitter finally comes out with efforts to deal with problems in harassment. So so you can mute more things. That strikes me as a paper tiger because the 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 harassment of you is going on all around you. Right. And you just don't know about it. I've always complained so it really about fix this. It. Yeah, Twitter's response to me complaining about trolling was, "Well, just mute them." Yeah, so <laughs> that fixes nothing. That's putting your head in yeah. the sand. That's yeah. <laughs> What do you think, Stacey? Uh, I, I don't think this is a solution. I don't think it's something that can be solved because people are going to behave like jerks. I think going like I know, Leo, you're like, oh, our advertisers, you know, people are going to our advertisers and that sort of thing. When people say bad things about you on Twitter, it, I think your advertisers and people in general HR people, they need to have, they need to take their information online with a grain of salt. So yeah, oddly enough, many of them don't. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just, I, so we then, we have to have the talk with them and then they do. There was actually, so uh, this was a year ago or something. Somebody tweeted something horrible. Uh, no, I think what it was is I had said something about a sponsor and they uh, tweeted it in a way that it sounded like I'd said something else. And the sponsor wanted to make it clear that I hadn't meant that. And they wanted to put out a press release, a press release. And I said, okay, so here's what you do. Go look at that account. How many followers does that person have? Mm, none. How, when was it created? Uh, yesterday. Okay. So who saw that tweet? Um, us. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and who will see it if you have a pre put out a press release about it? Did you, did you tell them to go Google Streisand Effect? Yeah, well, I but I had explained that is the point, and you'd yeah. think you'd expect the people would know better. No, but they don't. Sense. My favorite tweet of yesterday's my friend John Robinson, who was a former newspaper editor, said, "Boy, Jeff, people with thirty five followers really don't like you." <laughs> <laughs> be happy, but that's actually, believe it or not, a sophisticated point of view. Oh, absolutely, that he that's understood exactly. that. Is oh, yeah. This yeah. is yeah. part of the problem I have with Twitter. I mean, I really hate Twitter in this part. I, Not, I having nothing to do with me, I, I, you know, but it just, this is a problem with Twitter, I think. I, I think it's a familiarity with the medium and a willingness to think critically, which people aren't necessarily well, that, able to do. But Isn't that what we're saying about fake news? Like, people just but use their We're noggin. saying give them, give them tools. Twitter gives us tools. We can see that right. this egg that's tweeting with us, you know, is an egg in has 10 followers. And then you're like, oh, who cares what they think? Right. Well, anyway, I, I thought I'd just throw that Twitter story in and now we can move on. Let's let's talk about something that let's doesn't Let's talk about the Arnold news. router. 
the the Arnold no almond router. Ar uh, Arnold router. I would look almond uh, router. router. We should talk about it next week after I've had a chance to play with what, it. What? Why oh. is it different than other? Why is this router different than other routers, Stacy? <laughs> oh, oh, was that before the show? Okay, it was. I can't. I was like, I can't remember when things happened. That was before the um, show. So this is a router that came out today. Yeah. Um, and it is a. Oh, it's router. pretty. It's pretty. It's got a touch screen and it's mesh network capable and it has Zigbee, Z Wave, Bluetooth, and Wi Fi radios inside. So it can control a lot of your smart home stuff. Or. So you don't need a hub. So it could be hacked in all sorts of new and different ways. Okay. So we can talk about that too. <laughs> um, Z Wave actually. Oh, no. That Zigbee. did not happen yet. Zigbee. Zigbee. Uh, we can talk about the Zigbee hack. Yes. Yeah. Zigbee um, uh, Hue lights were hacked using. Zigbee as a uh, as an intermediary. Yes. Now people are really upset about this now, but this was actually a vulnerability reported over a year ago. Oh yeah, it's an old vulnerability. It's yeah. old vulnerability, yeah. and it's a manufacturer's. It's it's actually Philips Hue is bearing the brunt of this, and they should be talking to their suppliers. But this is a this is basically the tokens being put in right. the chips. Nothing so this Hue was could like do a, about it. In other words, right. Nothing you or I could do about it. Um, so uh -huh. oh. I, I don't know why. Oh, no. um, you're, so, you're still writing headlines. You haven't stopped. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so, so this vulnerability, which is legit, is a chip thing. And this kind of, it's going to get worse before it gets better, you guys, when it comes to the IoT. Because what we're seeing now is a bunch of people, and you're going to hear about this in the coming weeks, are suddenly like, holy cow. All the security stuff we like said was part of our product that people should follow. They're yeah. not following it, so yeah. we're going to make them follow it as part of certifications. So we're going to see that sort of thing coming down the pike. And we're also going to see manufacturers get more um, diligent. They're going to be their, – their advice is going to get stronger, I guess, to a company. So we'll, they'll be like, hey, I noticed that you're building something that doesn't look quite secure enough. Let me show you how it's done. I like that. So, wouldn't that be nice? But that's the problem is that's not going to come to products for the next like 18 months to three years, depending on. It's, and in the meantime, we've got all this old stuff. It's kind of like <laughs> Microsoft Clippy. Remember, he used to say, I see you're writing a shopping list. May yeah, I help? Yeah. I feel like it might be more like the the protection squad coming around your yeah, small business maybe. saying, I see that you're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, you're going to be forced into it. By the way, one more election story. Uh, we had talked before the election about the Department of Homeland Security going out, 40 states asking for help, securing election databases. Um, there was worry about uh, election fraud, rigged system, et cetera, et cetera. Nothing happened, right? That we know of. We know of. Well, we would, wouldn't we know about it by now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, it was, if it was really good hacking, maybe not. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe we lost because we were hacked. I'm Is that a note that. saying stop talking about the election? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> good, yeah, good going. <laughs> no, I got that note earlier, actually, uh, <laughs> and ignored it. You know me. I'm a rebel. Uh, I want to take yeah. a break. And then we do have, there's so much. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff happening. Other stuff. Uh, news from Google and One Plus One and uh, just just on. <gasps> and Sorry. I got so excited when you said news from Google because we could talk about the photo scanning thing. Yes, <laughs> that's one of that's what actually they just handed me a photo so I could demonstrate it. Oh, uh, okay. I want to understand it. I want to get it. I understand. We'll do that when we come back. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, a big a big acquisition, a big acquisition. Just an eight billion dollar acquisition just happened. Oh, oh that you may oh, not. Oh. Oh, expect. Are we talking about? Well, I'm Samsung? gonna stay and, yes. and listen. Stay. Oh, I'm ruining your. I'm ruining your stay. Yeah, for thanks. That. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> yeah. about Samsung. Anything else you'd like to say about that? <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, and why you might not want to use a cheap Android phone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy cow! Did you open your Pixel box? Did you keep it? Do you like it? Yeah, I had one. When we come back, I will tell you about my. It was in the box. And I had one big problem. Uh-oh. We'll so that's also a tease. Another tease. Uh, a Jeff so Rant. Wait. I'm sure they can't he wait to hear me whine. And a big anniversary that I want to celebrate. But first, 
Let's talk about food. Glorious food. Stacy's sitting there. She knows after this show, she's got a responsibility. She's got a spatch cock of chicken or whatever it is she does. Dinner's, dinner's, you know, it's almost dinner time. And you know how it is. You work, long, hard day. You've been on podcasts all day. Last thing you want to do, at least if you're me, think about a menu, plan a menu, go shopping for ingredients, go home and cook the menu. By then it's 9 p.m. And you'd, and you'd wish you'd gone to Applebee's. Or worse, you do what I do. You go, there's a jack in the box on the way. I'm just going to stop there. Let's not do that. Let's go to Blue Apron instead. In fact, if you go now to blueapron.com slash twit, you get your first three meals free. And the next time you're wondering, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? You'll have something wonderful waiting for you. Blue Apron del delivers seasonal recipes re with fresh, high-quality ingredients right to your door. Always exactly the ingredients you need. Never uh, extra, so you don't waste. You need one clove of garlic, you got one clove, not a whole head, which is nice. I always hate that seeing that clove of garlic rot there on my counter waiting for me to use it again. Not with Blue Apron. And all the menus can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. They're delicious. Oh, the, oh, they're getting ready for the holidays. Roast turkey and cranberry sauce. Oh, that looks good. Oh, oh Brussels sprouts. Well, I like oh. Brussels sprouts. You, when you did know what? Brussels sprouts become a Thanksgiving side? Has that always been? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, and I love them. But many people I, hate I like them. them. But a great Brussels sprout recipe, you see, might be the, the ticket. Because they're so good for you. Those cru little crucifery just waiting to cure your cancer. Right there. They're cancer fighting. Pill. You'd take a cancer fighting pill. Well, this is like that. <laughs> I'm not making any false health claims. Uh, if you spend time eating out, or maybe you go to those fancy grocery stores, you're going to spend a lot less, about 60% less with Blue Apron, under $10 per person for a healthy home cooked meal. Plus, you get this great, satisfying feeling that you made it. There's nothing like cooking for your family, it's like cooking up love. And it's just great. When they sit down to that Italian wedding soup and they go, wow, this is great. And they slurp it up in five seconds and they run out the door. You could just say, mm, 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 I cooked. You also get this great feeling in the house because the house smells wonderful. <gasps> and by the way, the freshest, highest quality ingredients. S seafood is sus sourced sustainably. The beef is raised humanely. The chickens are free range. The porks are raised naturally. It's the stuff you would buy. And the tomatoes are gorgeous. Oh, did you get heirloom I, from, from I that? have never seen prettier tomatoes. I don't know how they life. do that. Really, it's amazing. Mm -mm -mm. And you'll, sometimes you'll use ingredients you've never tried before, and then you'll go, oh, I'm going to use that. I found a new bok choy. It's not bok choy. It's something else choy. And, but it's like a bok choy, but it's so good. It's my new thing, my new favorite thing. Uh, you look at that. See a little tiny bottle of sesame oil instead of, the you know, like a whole big one. Just the right amount of, you know, soy sauce or whatever it is you need. What's on the menu this week? We'll take a look. Pan-seared chicken with roasted fall vegetables and butter caper sauce. I guarantee you, you will be making butter caper sauce a lot all of a sudden. Spicy lotus root and purple carrot stir fry with sweet potato noodles. Yes, they have vegetarian meals. You get to choose, though. You go to blueapron.com. You pick the menu for the week, and that's what you're going to get. They have plans for couples and plans for families with kid-friendly ingredients. And by the way, I love this. Research shows Blue Apron families cook together nearly three times more often. And that is what you want. Trust me. Crispy shrimp po' boys. Pan seared chicken. Ooh, look at, oh, lordy. Lordy, lordy. That looks delicious. Sweet chili glazed cod. Quinoa and broccoli burgers. Chicken rollatini. Oh, wait a minute. I want to know how to make that. Oh, I'll be ordering that tonight. My next box, chicken rollatini. Oh, that looks good. Blueapron.com slash twit. Your first three meals free. And with free shipping, Blue Apron ships to 99% of the continental United <gasps> States. Short rib burgers on pretzel buns. Yeah! Don't, do you love pretzel? Do you love the pretzel bread? Oh, yeah. Um, I do. Yeah. Yes. We go to pretzel a... Brot. Uh, pretzel brot. We go to a restaurant that... They fresh baked pretzel bread. It's up in Healdsburg. I'll take you guys there if you ever come visit. Ooh. It's up on Healdsburg. Healdsburg. <laughs> and they uh Healdsburg. And they uh it's fresh, so it's warm, fresh, right out of the oven, steaming. And then they serve with it a lard and mustard butter that you would just like flip your lid. And you eat that and it's 
heaven. All right. I'm starving already. Blue so. I know. BlueRapper.com yeah, slash Twitch. So we can go eat. I know. Yeah. I hate doing these ads. They make me hungry. At least I know it's waiting for me at home. All right. So uh, what should we start with? The quick one. This is a quickie. Samsung has just acquired Harman Kardon for $8 Harman billion. Harman? Harman, not Harman Kardon. $8 billion. Thank you for the correction. They're not called Harman Kardon anymore. They're just Harman. It's uh, They do uh, car accessories. Harman International Industries Incorporated, which is high. They design and manufacture connected automobile entertainment systems. I'm actually kind of interested in this because... Twit is on the Harman Kardon radios. They have ah, podcasts. Well, it's also it's also home stuff too. They do speakers as well. Mm -hmm, still, mm -hmm. okay. Samsung. Like, so Samsung acquired Smart Things. Mm -hmm. um, they're really they 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 want to be a player, don't they? In this uh, in this, this area, connected home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they do, and they also have um, a cloud service. They also make modules, little connected chip modules that you can build into products for IOT. And I look at this and I'm like, it's natural that I feel like, sorry, <laughs> let me just, let me just start all over again. I feel like this is a natural deal for them. The car is going to be connected. The question is yes. who's going to do the connecting and what is the OS? And so getting in there with this buy makes sense. And getting into speakers makes sense mm -hmm. because your home's going to have to have a voice mm -hmm. too. And they also bought a Chinese electric or a big stake in a Chinese electric car maker, BYD company. Um, one, one, one analyst said this is Samsung's life after smartphones. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Like what do you do when your phone business Although blows up? Although that's not totally Nokia fair too. because... Samsung has a huge appliance business. Oh, yeah. It has all yes. these other... The mobile I mean, business was 5% of their overall market. Yeah. So it's a small amount. Nevertheless, uh, it was their future, you know, you can only sell so many refrigerators and bulldozers. At some point, you got to, you know, you want to be in a big consumer category. So the, apparently electric cars are going to be a big thing for them as well. And all the things that go inside them. So many things. And Harman's stuff is sold in BMWs, Volkswagens, and GM. So, ah. so who will buy Bose? Does someone ah, already own Bose? No. Bose, Bose was held by the family. And, of course, Mr. Bose just passed, Dr. Bose passed away fairly recently. Mm -hmm. So that actually, you, you may be uh, exactly right. I think MIT still owns a huge stake in Bose because... Uh, Dr. Bose gave them stock in the company uh, when he created it. He was right. from MIT. Amar Bose founded it in 1964. You're right, Stacy. I think Bose would be a good acquisition. All right, and then uh, you want to take a look at. You want to talk about this? I got. I can demo it. Say, why don't you tell us, Stacy, what this is? This photo scanner thing. Oh, I thought it was like the phone. Uh, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Have you ever seen one of these? All right. The photo scanner, Google announced this this week. It basically allows you to take a picture, but it's not actually a picture. So you you scan an old print picture. So all of your old school print pictures, for those of us who are like older than 25, yeah. you can use the phone as a formal scanner. So it creates a high resolution image. It's not lossy. And it then stores it in Google's cloud where you can presumably organize it and do great things with it. And as I'm about to demonstrate, the thing they say right up front is position photo within frame, tap button to start scanning. Don't worry about glare. Well, this is a very glossy uh, photo. So, okay, I'm going to position the photo within the frame, even though it's kind of weirdly angled. Turns on the flash. Now it says, I don't, you, can you see it? Move this circle over a dot. So it's figured out what's what it wants. And it yep. says, do this. And I should be able to get a full. So that was four or five images. Nice work. Your photo is being processed. So this is the image, a very glossy image of my friend Winton and Vince Surf in their in, in Vince wine cellar, it looks like. How well did it do? Not great. Not great. Mm. I have to say that's mm. that there's glare. A lot there of is it. glare. Yeah. Well, you're also in a studio with a hell of a lot of glare. That's true. It's an unusual amount of light. And, but what it did do is straighten it perfectly and stitch it perfectly. So so that's impressive. Um, you can adjust the corners. 
You can rotate it. Let's see, what else can we do with it? Now, that's about it. Looks like adjust corners, which is, you see how it figured out what's square on that from the initial image? I bet you I bet you, I could, uh, I could do another one and see if I'd do a better job of it. What do you think? Should I try again? Yeah. I did one last night, and it, it looked good. But again, I was not, it was a glossy photo, but it was not your studio. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and I think by moving it around, you can only get it so, could do so much to ungloss it, right? That's, let's try one. I'll give it one more shot here. By the way, my thumb is going to be in the shot now. Let's see. All right. Now it's processing it. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. That's much better. Look at that. Yeah, it is. Did it take your thumb out? Uh, no, my thumb is still there. <laughs> so I'm getting these little kids. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's actually, it looks like it did a, it did a pretty, pretty good job. This yeah. would be painful for doing this for right. like all of your photos, but you know, Hey, now it, of course, it, it is nice. Like I might do it for a couple of my wedding photos. Yeah. Which, Cause you have prints. You don't have, uh, you don't have digital versions of them. I actually have a CD, which wow. I should probably move to <laughs> something. Wow. wow. <laughs> Guess you got married in the 80s, didn't you? So, no, Aww. teasing you. Teasing. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you do this, it gets imported into your Google Photos where you do have, of course, many more edit uh, tools. Uh, that's pretty cool. I and think it's free. Neat. Yeah. I have, I have lots of, and I, if you've ever done like family photos and wedding photos and those kind of things, a lot of times you have to pay a lot extra for the digital imagery. Right. This is this is a really evil thing for me to do for photographers. So all my friends who are photographers are going to be mad at me. But now you have a way to like be like, oh, I got my one print. I'll yeah, yeah, they don't like that, do they? No, they hate no. it. That's it, how they make legitimately their money. So yeah. Uh, all right. Um, let's see what else. There's actually quite a bit of new Google news. Google Translate is going to get better. They're sending it, uh, the so you first of all, Google Translate is already. Super cool. Really good. Pretty amazing. Yeah. If you travel, um, you can fire up Google Translate and say or type a phrase and it will say or sometimes type the resulting translation. It's very accurate. 103 languages. It has the ability to do in some in many of those languages a conversational back and forth. Jeff, you speak German. Is it pretty good? Um, it's mistake. You'd think it'd be better at recognizing certain mistakes, but some things are really hard. German capitalizes nouns. It refers back as, as an article, uh, a female noun is referred to as she. Right. Even though we would think of it as an it. Right. Uh, so there's things that you think they'd start to get to learn, but no, I, I'm being, I'm quibbling. The point is that, that when I get uh, flummoxed on a sentence, which is very often, my German is very bad. Um, Google Translate will will lead me the right way. Yeah, awkwardly, but it'll might get better because they're now applying neural machine translation uh, and statistical models to the text. Um, They've been doing this for a while. Well, it I says mean, today we're introducing the next step in making Google Translate even better: neural machine translation. Oh, they've been doing it, but it hasn't been inside Google Translate. Maybe. Uh, oh, it's okay. I was like Jeff Hinton. Uh, all of his stuff is yeah, on, yeah. His CNN research is on translation. They've had it, but they haven't put it into this nice free app yet. Got it. Today, we're putting neural machine translation into action with a total of eight language pairs to and from English and French, German, Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Turkish. That's about a third of the world's population and more than 35% of all Google Translate queries. The advantage of this, of course, is it's looking at a larger chunk of, so it can do sentences because it understands context better. So here's a German phrase. I'll let you read this, Jeff. <laughs> Problem can man man niemals Problems can one uh, uh, can one ben, ne never Denkweise with the same Denkweise. Deutsch, Denkweise. Denkweise. Deutsch die sei entstanden sind. Now, this is the an old translation was, no problem can be solved from the same consciousness that they have arisen, which is obviously okay. fractured, but you can kind of understand awesome. it. The new translation, problems can never... any sense anyway in any language. Yeah, That's problems right. can never be solved with the same way of thinking that caused them. That's a much more colloquial translation. Yeah. 
Yes, but let's philosophy. Really, this is what they're translating for us. <laughs> well, I mean, if you can do philosophy, like you can easily know, do like which like way the to the bathroom. <laughs> Dundee style banyo. Yeah. Ah. Uh, 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 yeah. And there's more coming today too. They continue on in this blog post. Google Cloud Platform, our public cloud service, offers machine learning APIs that make it easy for anyone. To use our machine learning technology today, Google Cloud Platform is also making the system behind neural machine translation available for all businesses through a Google Cloud Translation API. Wow. Oh, oh. That is pretty amazing they're giving that one away. Well, maybe they're not giving it away. I don't know. But the, they're opening that up is pretty great. And, it's, you know, a lot of this was done with community support in their translation community. So maybe... You know. Well, if you want to, if you want to catalog the world's information, it makes sense that you would translation is a key part of that. Right. Um, yeah. We got to all get on the same page here. Uh oh, is this our Tower of Babel? Yeah. Oh no. We are in a Tower uh, of Political Babel now. Nope. <laughs> we all no speak politics. the same language, but it's <laughs> got different meanings. So. Let's Bad news, if you bought a blue phone, BLU, these have been very inexpensive phones, Android, but they also make Windows phones. And apparently, they're made in uh, China. Some security, it's about $50 for these blue phones. The security contractors have discovered some of these phones had pre-installed software that monitored user, where users go, whom they talk to, and what they write in text messages now, the American authorities, according to the New York Times, say it's not clear whether this represents a secretive data mining for advertising purposes or a Chinese government effort to collect intelligence. I'm going to bet the former. Yeah. And this is, I mean, Facebook does this, right? Yeah. So Yeah, this is, a, the, the name of the company is Shanghai Ad Ups Technology Company. 700 million phones, cars, and other smart devices Blue, which is actually, I take it back, an American manufacturer, not a Chinese manufacturer, said that 120,000 of its phones had been affected, but they've updated the software to eliminate the feature. It sounds like it's really about ads. You know, monitor everything the user does and we'll give you better ads. They said uh, that it wasn't it was supposed to be on Chinese phones, but not. It was inadvertently put on American phones. Well. <laughs> Blue said, we didn't know. We fixed it. So can I ask a different question? A different topic? Yeah. Have you, have you been using the new Android Auto on your phone? Not yet, no. What is you, this? Stacey? You yeah, can now, Android without Android, Android Auto in the car, you can use, you can, you're, 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 the, the current Android Auto will act like, on your phone, will act like it is in the car. So you'll have to download the app because it's a separate app. By the way, you know what? There have been auto, Samsung's offered an auto app. A lot of companies make apps. So all the Samsung phones come with an app that when you are in a car, that simplified user interface comes up on your phone screen and it limits the kinds of things you can do to, to music, you know, ways, stuff like that. I have, I have like a freaking computer in my car, so I don't really worry about it. Yeah, we you know drive a Tesla, Jeff. So, oh, I, humble brag. I do want an Echo in my car. I find myself, because I can talk to my Tesla, but which is nice. It's stupid. But it's dumb. And now I'm like, holy moly. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll have like a legit question. And I'm like, oh, but... In January, hopefully, the Pebble Core comes out, and that's supposed to be like a little wearable Android button. Uh, oh. Sorry, a little wearable Echo button. So I'm hoping I'll be like, boop, boop. It's using the Echo uh, interface mm -hmm. software? Oh, that's neat. Or it has, a, it, yes, it has Alexa capability, Alexa voice service. That's really cool. So. So I'm, I'm firing up the Android Auto right now on my Pixel. Boy, it asks permission to do everything. It wants because I don't. Who wants an app in their car? That's a sucky way. Well, to no, no, if no, you no. don't I, have Android Auto, so that you put your, you know, your phone in your mm -hmm. car and you see it on the car's screen, this way, what you do is you 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 have a mount and you put your phone right. there, and then it's yeah, like what I do Android Auto. Ways. Yeah, which would lead us to our story about the Pixel in a second. Oh. So let me just turn this on and see what it looks like. Permission needed. 
Oh, you have to connect it to... I can't do it because I have to car, connect it with yeah, my I'm car afraid first. Not. I, yeah. I, I should have gone with the other phone. Oh, wait a minute. It says, yeah, Tesla Model X. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I can do this with my Tesla? Yeah. So here's the and interface. Have have a pixel? Here's the interface. Yeah. Here's my calendar. Very I should simple. turn it this way. Probably would be better. No, oh, this way is better. I can still see my Tesla. My Tesla gives me my calendar. Right. But do you get this? Waze? Okay. I do not get Waze. And okay, I don't Google, find gas Waze. stations. That's, that's, it's, Google that Google Google Maps. Maps. it's Google Maps. Google Maps, yep. I do get Google Maps. Um, I can make a phone. So it's big buttons. I'm not going to show these phone numbers, but it's a big buttons, right? And then I can listen to music, and you get to select which music app. You can show it now. Book, which music app you want. Yep, so I'll probably shuts, put it on And it Audible. shuts down certain things that would be dangerous. Yeah, it's very. It's a very simple, simple interface. Like so that's you know, even simpler than the Audible interface. So you know, I've been waiting to buy interface. a car until I get Android Auto, and I like it, but I don't know if it actually may not be selling it to me. I don't know. What? I can't decide. Using the Android Auto Auto thing, because what happens is when I'm when I stop in the parking lot, uh, and I say it's okay to look at Twitter now. Well, I have to turn off Android Auto to do that. Yeah, bit of a pain. Yeah, so it's it's really only three apps, but see because of this front page interface, I have my book, I have my navigation based on my calendar, Balls. and I can hit that and would mm -hmm. navigate to it. I have weather here, right? Um, yep. So let's say I want to go get my hearing aid tuned up. I just press that button, and then I get, and then I get, and it's and if it's paired to the speaker on the phone, it goes over the car. right, it'll we'll go over that. the car stuff. So that's pretty good. You know what? I might use this. You'd need what you'd want is a mount on your dashboard or something. Yeah, and I use the one that just goes. Gee, gee. You know, we had the all these complicated goes, mounts. Yeah, just you need know, a suction these, cup. Oh, you, well, no, no, not even that. It goes into the ventilation, and it just, yeah. it's just a spring thing right. goes like this, right? Mm -hmm. We always used to have these mounts that had you know two pounds of plastic and all yeah, this no, stuff, no, no. and yeah. it was just so ridiculously overdone. Yeah, I have a little uh, uh, dashboard. I mean, uh, vent mount. That's a really easy way to do it. Yeah. Um, so here's you would want to plug it in, obviously, and plug it into the... Yes, yes, yes. That's not bad. It's not better than the interface on most cars. You should, you should try it out. I'll be curious to hear your reaction to it. If you I'll try it on the way home. Okay. So you want to hear my, my Pixel story? Yeah, so you have a Pixel XL? An XL. The big one. And I uh, went back and forth, back and forth. Neurotic just drives your audience crazy. I can't decide. I, bu I box it up. I get all. So then I'm ready to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I'll keep it. Leo convinced me. Uh -oh. And I should know uh -oh. about Daydream. And okay, I'll do it. Uh -oh. So then um, I say, I, I open up the box. Yeah. And I go to take a drive. And I, and I go ahead and switch the SIM. And I take my drive. And the, a GPS is like 50 yards off. Yeah. So it's driving me completely. It almost got me into an accident because it's switching the directions every which way because it thinks it's going that way and it's not going that way. That road you're going over, it's actually over there when you're over here. I said, geez. So I restarted. I do all the things I'm supposed to do. I go to the support forum and I talk to and I do everything you're supposed to do. All right. Two pieces of this story. One is, I think, well, okay, it's a Pixel. Pixel has its own dedicated service, right? Wonderful Google service, right? So I call and... I mean, a nice person, but it was like calling Dell. Uh, oh, oh, I have a Google support story we could talk about, too. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. I love Stacey's enthusiasm. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> She's not a burnout, dried out old cynic like you and me. My gosh. <laughs> so I got all mad and unhappy. And I'm growling on Twitter and I all over. But then I go back to support forum. And people there, you know, the beautiful thing about other customers is they're trying different things. They're working out. Right. So by the, the, the trick was... Uh, it must have taken some kind of settings. There's problems with GPS on this phone, I think, with other other reasons people said. But if you uh, delete the cache, delete the data, uninstall, and then reinstall the app without signing in at first, it'll it'll click on right. And so it's been working fine oh. for about five days. So I'm keeping it. Oh, good. That was your only complaint. It was a big one because I use I depend upon Waze every day. If I can't use right. Waze, I am doomed. Yeah. yeah. All right, Stacey. I didn't have over to you. Okay. So similar story, little different. I bought a Google Home product, right? Yeah. Um, and this was last week. I connected it. I was talking to it. It was exciting. And then I went to, I connected my Nest. That was good. It worked. Then I went to connect my Philips Hue lights and it didn't work. And the process is you add the device, you click, it says, do you want Nest, Philips Hue or SmartThings? 
And I said, oh, Philips Hue. And then it opens up a browser window for the authentication for your lights. And during that process, when it did that, it was like, oh, failed. And so I was like, oh, I tried it again, didn't work. Because you weren't seeing everything. it on your screen? Or, I mean, no, it just it just said failed to connect, oh. and I got the troubleshooting page. Right. So the troubleshooting page was reboot, reboot. Uh, sorry, reboot the Google Home, reboot your Philips Hue, and if that doesn't work, try something else. So then I went to the deeper troubleshooting page because that was the one that like showed up when you failed. Oh, and it also said make sure the lights are on on your Philips Hue. All of all of that was working. Um. So eventually I had to call support because the the next level of support was not great. Um, and that person was very nice, but she didn't, she, she basically walked me through the same steps that were on the website. And she failed to ask me what I feel are basic questions. Like what are the routers you're using? What is your browser? Right. So then, but I spent half an hour on the phone with a person and my lights weren't connected. She was very nice. Um, uh, and then she was like, I don't know. She she brought in some people apparently that she was talking to. And she's like, in 48 or 24 to 48 hours, you'll have an answer. And I was like, okay, wow. fine. Okay. I know. So then I get this email from Google with my answer. And it had the same like first six steps. And then it was like, then it went into uninstall the app, reinstall it. And then it was like, if that didn't work, just try it on a different device. <laughs> And I was like, and that was it. Um, I complained about it on my podcast and I actually got the right answer from Philips. They were like, look, you are using Adblock as your browser and oh. it only supports Chrome and Safari. Oh, of course. And someone else on Twitter was like, hey, you know, I was using Firefox as my browser and it didn't work for me either. But at no point in time during the Google Q&A. they Q say, like, what browser are you using? They never ask. Because yeah. sometimes, sometimes the mesh network routers can be weird. Right. I mean, there's a lot of challenges. Yeah, no, in, all those things you need to know. Yeah, if you're going to diagnosis. Yeah, so so that was that was my not and perfectly nice people, but completely useless support. Basically. Support is really hard, and most people don't get an answer when they call support. Almost always, googling it and going to the forums will is the best solution. But yeah. this is such a new problem. Like, and that's that's why I talked about it, because I knew someone in my audience probably would have dealt Smart. with this and exactly. Crowdsource. Um But yeah, still yeah. tough. It's hard. I mean, I do support on the radio every weekend and it's hard. Uh and you you just <laughs> what you want. Yeah. Here's my attitude on on calling support. By the way, this is kind of new for Google, right? Because they in the past it was we always joked it was support via Python script. You know, they don't have to give you much human support for Gmail. I got it's great support service. on on the Pixel computers. Stuff you pay department. for, that's different, right? Yeah. So Google Apps uh, for Business, G Suite, you should get good service. You buy a $1,200 computer, you should get good service. Buy a $1,000 phone or, you know, $100 doohickey, you should get better service anyway. But I think it's hard to do in every computer company. This is such a you. This is very typical, Stacy. Your experience. It is. The only reason I ever call support. This is really the only reason I don't ever expect an answer. But what I'm hoping is, if they're getting a lot of people reporting a problem, that they'll know that. Either exactly. anecdotally, that's all I wanted to do. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Either and anecdotally, said, or there's a the bulletin script. on their wall saying, "Hey, if people call about this, we boy, yeah, we." But most said, of the time, all I that's want fine. you to do, I said, I said, stop giving me the script. I've already gone through all yeah, yeah. the things that other people have done. So just tell me this? that you're going to say, I know about this. And they wouldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, they didn't. They didn't. Probably. Yeah. And they it's, didn't know about mine. I was kind of hoping that someone yeah. had, had encountered this problem. Well, it's poorly designed. You know, you understand what they have. They have a notebook with a decision tree in it. Yes. And you can hear her going through the notebook. All right. Let's see. Page 42. Did you. I mean, oh, but, she was so sincere. Yeah, she's I mean, doing the best she can. Right, which is why you have to be. I like. I was nice. I did all the steps, and yeah, it was cute. She finally did ask me what kind of phone I was using, but it wasn't even to troubleshoot. It was so she could pick the diagram to tell me right. where like the buttons were. Customer support is only notable when it's good, because you know when when you get something that and it really helps and it fixes it, that then you go wow. Most of the time, Although, it's exactly so what you got. I've, 
I have had customer support with Verizon of all places where I've had really challenging technical issues yeah. and by gum, if that person did not stay on the phone with me and solve my problem That's for nice. me. You know, <laughs> I've like, even had oh. good support from Comcast, you know, I mean, <gasps> even a, even a broken clock's right twice a day. I mean, it's just, yeah. Uh, there's a new Google Play Music update that allows, uh, again, machine learning. We're seeing Google apply machine learning across the board. It looks at your location and tries to suggest music that's appropriate to where you are, the time of day, and what you're doing. It's always had time of day stuff, right? Um, but should, should I be using Play Music, you guys? Because I really love Spotify. And no, stick with Spotify. With Google Home, I'm like, I could use it. Can you use okay. Spotify with Google Home? Oh, yes, you can. Okay, as long as you can use Spotify. Um, I, li I have subscription. To, I actually let my Spotify lapse because I have a subscription to Google Play Music and Amazon, that new Amazon Unlimited mm -hmm. Music. Um, and Google Play is fine with me. Here's the biggest difference between that and Spotify. Uh, Google Play Music has a music uploader I put on my computer and I have all the music I've ever bought or owned or digitized. You know, many, many gigabytes of songs are uploaded to Google Play Music. So I have access to my full music library in addition to its own. And that's only useful if you have something that's weird, unusual. I have like upsampled Beatles songs, stuff like that. Um, actually, I don't even, can you get Beatles yet? I don't know. It, yeah, uh, you can on Spotify and Amazon Music. Yeah, you can't get Beatles on, uh, on this. Um, sold out, man. Man, they sold out. So um, I like Google Play Music. I think it has the world's ugliest interface. Look, this is the interface. Would well, do you guys agree with me? This, I mean, yeah, Spotify I looks so good. Um, it just is hideous. What kind of music do they play for here? Scroll up to it. Um, no. I don't well, have know. local. Here's getting things done uh, music. No. Getting things done. I'm a boss. Oh, I was hoping for work, work, work. <laughs> <laughs> About the money featuring Young Thug. Oh, nice. Yeah. We got London on the uh, I better stop this right now. There uh, might yeah. be some explicit <laughs> lyrics there. Uh, they think I like hip hop because I uploaded a ton of hip hop, but it belonged to my son. Epic film oh, scores. Was... You know, it belonged to my son. Epic film scores. That's good. Oh, is that songs to run across the field too? So when you log in, if you have made, play me. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the hills are alive. I just, I think Spotify, I have to say, I think Spotify's user interface looks a heck of a lot better. And I like, uh, so the Discover. I love Discover Weekly. Weekly. God bless it. Yeah. I it's miss awesome. That. It, although my daughter, holy cow, you guys, she discovered Pokemon and all she does is play. There are two things that happen in my house more than any other. It's the Pokemon theme song. Mm. And an acapella mashup of Daft Punk's greatest hits by a group called <laughs> Pentatonix. Oh, you oh, gotta love yeah. the Pentatonix. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> well, it's totally messing with my Discover. Let me just well, tell you. Oh, and just so because she plays it through your account, do you get, um, as a result, do you get that in your hey, Google? It, fix it, try yeah. it, change it, I get some weird stuff. Like this? Does it sound a I little familiar? It, 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 Are you hearing this a lot? You know what was really bad when Frozen was big? Um, Did your daughter yes, get a... I lived, yeah. I lived through that, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I actually, I she dressed as Anna one year for Christmas, uh -huh. and I dressed as Elsa. Aww. And by golly, we looked amazing. Cute, cute. Uh, I like Google Play Music. I think they're you know they all have pretty much the same songs now, so it's really things like the curated playlists, the user interface. Spotify really looks best on all platforms. I really like Spotify. I kind of miss it. Um, you did have a story on here about Spotify writing crazy amounts of stuff. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday in security. Now, it's just a bug in Spotify uh, in its uh, implementation of the uh, MySQL database, or was it SQLite? I can't remember. But uh, they were compressing the database constantly. You're only supposed to do that every once in a while. So as a result, it would write gigabytes 
it, it wasn't filling up drives with gigabytes. It would write the same, write and erase, write and erase, write and erase, uh, in effect, because it was compressing the database like every second. Uh, it's just a bug. They fixed it. Um, but if you had an SSD, they may have worn out your SSD before they fixed it. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad. So get the if you don't have the latest Spotify, you should get it right now. Especially if you're using it on a computer with SSD. Or I guess any phone is an SSD, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, someone just brought up a speak and spell in the chat. Oh. Sorry. You okay. come from speak and spell territory down there. I do. Yeah. I had a speak and spell. My husband and I still yell out to each other when something happens. We're like, I win in that speak and spell voice. Wow. I know. We're, yeah. we're young, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's funny because I always shout, Hoover wins. So. The vacuum or the president? <laughs> it was a bad joke. <laughs> it was a, I should have said Truman wins. Then it would have been obvious. Yes, right? yeah. And yes. Dewey wins. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, Project Era, we never knew it. Uh, now you can see photos of Google's canceled Project Era and its full spec sheet. I never thought this was going anywhere. This is the modular phone system. It's so they, hopeful. But yeah, Leo, you told me, you were like, Stacy, this is not going to work. It's going to be janky. Uh, um, yeah. And it, and uh, this was the Motorola, it was a Motorola project, which Google kept when they sold off uh, Motorola. So beautiful. So dead yeah there's enough there's too many phones out there as it is we don't need more phones well we've hit peak phone and peak phone for sure new yeah they can do yeah uh oh my um my new uh canvas um google whatchamacallit shipped oh your daydream a daydream that's not canvas my friend that's a space yeah, age like material uh, <laughs> same material wait. they make running shirts out of I was going to say someone someone did a review and it was like like sweatpants on your face. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a space age material that wicks moisture away and is you can remove the inside thing and it's washable. I I still don't really understand how this differs from cardboard. It's just a more expensive, better made, softer version of Google Cardboard. Oh, that's right. Because we decided the hardware had nothing to support. Oh no, we decided the hardware had nothing to support. Right now, it's only pixels, but they say other phones will support it down the road. But. Uh, you got one free, right, Jeff? Because you bought a Pixel. Yeah. Yeah. I bought a Pixel, but nobody ever mentioned a free daydream. Oh, uh, you should you should be getting the code. Yeah. In your email. Oh, that's, that's what you got. Did it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What should I search for? Google support bot. Um. Yeah, did you search for daydream? Daydream. There you go. You'd be surprised. Oh, yeah. Your Daydream View promo code is coming oh, soon. Good. Oh, good. <laughs> oh. This came today, an hour ago. Hi there. Hi there. Thanks for your recent Pixel purchase. Be on the lookout for your Daydream View promo code. It'll be emailed to you within four weeks of your Pixel shipment date. Well, that's passed, hasn't it? Well, this came today. That's weird, really. Uh, I ordered it. My I ordered the Pixel October fourth. Yeah. So this is no. Yeah, it's too late. Here's your Daydream View promo code. Yeah, that's what it said. Mine's coming soon. <laughs> I don't really care, but good. You can review it before I do. Let's see, real quick. I just want to make sure we get all the really interesting uh, stories in here that we've missed. Just for future reference, I won't go talk about it now. There's the Intercept, which is to say, Glenn Greenwald's I, operation. Just came I was out with reading a new this story. right now. NSA yeah. Fortress. There's this building in Lower Manhattan that is, it is nothing but solid concrete. It's a high rise from but bottom to all top. All telephone switching buildings look this like this. This is a high rise one. This is pure. This is, it's really it, weirdly so obelisky. And no, no, no. It's an old building. And it's on my screen right now. Building. Just if you but, want to see it, put um, it up, please. Thank you. Yeah. So it's quite amazing. You're not and getting my screen? It. Are you getting my screen? Is that a problem? I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. No, no, that's not my screen. That's what he's oh, getting sorry. for my screen. Oh. Okay, my fault. Uh, but it's the NSA had secret rooms there to do stuff. So it's just a good story. The other good story to, another day is I put up uh, on the rundown is a Theranos, 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 um, Theranos, uh, whistleblower, Schultz's grandson, and it's it's pretty harrowing. 
God, I just, I'm so disappointed by that story. Oh, same here. I just, wait, is, is, sorry, I have to ask, is this 60 Hudson that we're talking about? No, 33, something else, Taylor or something such a thing. Uh, it was oh, designed okay. by an architectural firm. <laughs> yeah. His grand vision was to create a communication nerve center like a 20th century fortress with spears and arrows replaced by protons and neutrons laying quiet siege to an army of machines within. Oh, my God. They built it, it is in the uh, ultimate brutalist. 33 Thomas Street. Oh, okay. Built in, be, by, be, cre created, started in 69, it was finished by 74. Um, the brutalist structure still used by AT and T. Built to withstand a nuclear attack. Oh, okay. well, well, that's, that's good. So, okay, it there. so all telco towers are built like like any yes. sort of data center. Switching centers. There is a data center How often do you see one that big? What's well, okay, New York? No, no, there's there's one in Amsterdam that is like um, I don't know how many square feet it is. It's not as high, but it is literally surrounded by a moat. Okay. Uh -huh. There there may be sharks in the moat. No. So doc lasers. documents uh, from. The Edward Snowden trove obtained by the Intercept do not specifically name 33 Thomas as a surveillance facility. However, taken together with architectural plans, public records, and interviews with former AT&T employees conducted for this article, writes the Intercept, they provide compelling evidence that 33 Thomas Street has served as an NSA surveillance site codenamed Titan Point. Inside a major international gateway switch that routes phone calls between the U.S. and countries across the world. A series of top-secret memos suggest the agency has tapped into these calls from a secure facility within the building. It's the core location for the controversial NSA surveillance program that has targeted the communications of the U.N., the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and at least 38 countries, including allies like Germany, Japan, and France. There's not so, that much of a story here. If it weren't a really scary looking building, it that's, that's really it's just kind of interesting. Thank you, Leo. <laughs> right, Thank you, Leo. <laughs> and it, the reason I it's a scary it. looking building is because that's all data all centers. All data buildings. centers are scary looking. We have one in town. I've I I shouldn't say this, but I've been brought inside one. Oh, I've been inside so many data You're centers. You're not supposed to be in there. Do you have yeah, a friend don't. in the biz? No, they No, 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 no. Breaks. Not oh. regular data centers. AT&T data centers. I have been inside the AT&T. Okay. They're supposed to be secure. Again. I was in the <laughs> national... A, I'm a very secure person. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got in, so, you know. <laughs> I was in the, well, the, the, one, the one in Bedminster is a knock that they take people... It's the national knock they take people into. Oh, they oh. love showing so off the, their knocks because the Huge room with yeah. all of the screens. Yes. And Blinking and all that lights stuff. and all that, yeah. They're like, yeah. look, this is your internet on yeah. the screen. And you're like, yeah. Ooh, has anybody, have you, have, have, did you go to Big Sur to get the uh, snapticles? No, but there, yeah. is it really in Tulsa? Is that really happening? The next that's one? Like eight hours away. Go, baby, go. Yeah. Get going. No. When is it? No. No. I think it's there now. Did it, they, Big Sur's, well, it's too late. If you, by the time you hear about it, the line's too long and you're not going to get one. Oh, I feel like in Tulsa, maybe you had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> the one in Big Sur, you had to hike through a park to get there and there was a huge line. Um, so remember we thought that they were, there, there, there it is, a special vending machine. We thought, wouldn't it be funny if you just walking down the street and you saw that and it, what? And you got, they're only 130 bucks, but we thought they were going to offer them only to influencers on Snapchat. But apparently yeah. by, they're creating incredible demand by this kind of. They're selling them for like a thousand bucks. I think Joanna Stern was showing her emails where so she was trying to get a copy or get a. Uh, I think the Wall hey, Street Journal could, should spring for a thousand dollars for those. Really? Yeah. Okay. Snapchat doesn't need the money. They have, according uh, to uh, Reuters, secretly filed for their IPO. Uh, for that means maybe they do need the money because they don't want to go public with their finances. So I think this secret filing is allowed now under uh, Jobs Act or something, right? It's something new. It is, and you have to go filing if you have more than, or you have to go public if you have more than a certain number of shareholders. Right. I don't know if they fit that. Apparently um, not. Yeah. Okay, so they were just like, "What up? We don't want to share." The uh, the guess is that uh, the IPO will be as soon as March for twenty to twenty five billion dollars. Uh, it would be the largest U.S. technology IPO since Facebook in twenty twelve with eighty one billion. Would you buy Snap, Snapchat stock? It's now called Snap, but would you buy Snap stock? 
Me? You know, no. if you're no, no. Well, I don't buy, so I don't okay. buy stock in anything. No, 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 no. Neither, none of us do, or maybe Jeff does, but well, I, I don't, do. you don't, and we recuse ourselves. But if you if you did, would you? Like I said, buy Facebook stock at the time, which was correct advice. Not that you should ever listen to me for stock advice. But I, I, my position there was you're investing in Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. and that that company, even though there's challenges. I don't want to invest in Evan Spiegel. Well, yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. If I go by that, if I go, no. It's no. going to be hot, though, because people think it's the next Facebook. Everybody wants to get the next Facebook. The company Ray has raised huge amounts of venture capital. It's not like they need the money at this point, but uh, still, why not cash in while but you can? for employees, yeah. Yeah. Money for employees. Plus, you know, if you're going to actually make these freaking spectacles, that's a <laughs> it's not a cheap endeavor. <laughs> so, floating that floating that vending machine to Big Sur in Tulsa that <laughs> takes cash, <laughs> and helium is in short supply. Do you, do you think okay, it sorry. comes in on balloons? They do have balloons attached. But they do have I'm thinking they got a truck. I don't think so. I think they probably have a truck. I'm thinking they use a more efficient uh, means of transportation. A truck and a crane. Uh, I think we're done. I think we're going to take a break and come back with your uh, picks of the week, tips of oh, the week. Oh, I'm so excited about my... I know yes. you got one. I know you got one. Uh, but first, a word from uh, FreshBooks. If you're a small business, a small business owner, if you're a sole proprietor or a freelancer, you know the worst thing is the end of the month when you got to... Well, there's paying bills, but then there's sending bills. If you don't send bills, you aren't going to be paying bills because you aren't going to be getting paid. So you got to do the invoices. I always hated that part. Never good at it. And uh, I found out about FreshBooks in 2004 and have been using it ever since and loved it. Actually, I don't. I now have a team of people. But for years, that was how I invoiced people, I, how I did my expenses. And the new FreshBooks, by the way, all new, completely redesigned, looks gorgeous. And it's not just about sending invoices. It's about knowing where you stand. So many freelancers, if you said, have you made a profit this year, would not know the answer. They'd well, I, you know, I, uh, I'm working. I'm paying my bills. Uh, how much did you make? Uh, well, if they use FreshBooks, they go to their FreshBooks page and they say immediately how much they made. You know, because it's not just invoices. It's when you get paid, how much you got paid, what your expenses were. It's also really great at tax time. It makes it very easy because you could print all the reports that the, you know, the accountant said, well, I need a P&L sheet. I don't know what that is, but uh, here's the button. You don't need to be an accountant to do the right thing, to keep track of how you're doing, to send those invoices. By the way, the tool to make and send invoices is so easy, and they look great. And there's no formatting nor formulas. Uh, you can add your logo and your custom color scheme. And when you send out an invoice, FreshBooks knows if your client has seen it. And so they can't dodge you by saying, oh, I didn't get your invoice yet. Yes, you did. You opened it last night, 6 p.m. Dude. Actually, you don't have to do that because they also will send out uh, late pay reminders and stuff. They do a lot of the work for you. Frankly, your clients are going to love it because they can pay using a variety of online uh, payment systems, including credit cards, right from the invoice. So it makes it easy for them too. Brand new. If you haven't looked at FreshBooks lately, go right now to freshbooks.com slash twig. It is fantastic. Fantastic. And it's so nice to have that information you need to do business without becoming a paper pusher. You don't, you know, you didn't get into business for, you know, because you want to be an accountant, but you do need to do a little bit there, and this makes it easy. How's my business doing? Know at a glance. The notification center works like a personal assistant, letting you know what's changed in your business since the last time you logged in and what should be dealt with, like overdue invoices. You can even take pictures of receipts on your phone using the FreshBooks app. Does it tell you to stop taking Ubers because it's costing you a lot of money? Yeah, actually, it would. Well, you'd see what your Uber expenditures were, you bet. And you can, it makes it easy to bill them out to the client, too. <clears throat> and if you do time and hours, it'll track your time as well. Freshbooks.com slash twig for a 30-day unrestricted free trial right now. But you got to do me a favor. And when they ask you on the form, how did you hear about us? Make sure you say this week in Google. Freshbooks.com slash twig, your 30-day Free trial awaits. Oh, you were so excited. I'm going to let you go right ahead. Stacey yeah. Higginbotham, what do you got okay. for us? I have the June oven, which I believe I... Oh, man, you got it! Yeah, okay, yes. 
So I got it a review unit. So I people had to are back laughing at me because I bought it after you talked about it. Well, it's I okay. I played with this thing for a week and a half. I cooked over a dozen meals. It was the best thing to happen to my cooking since I don't know. Uh, everything worked so well. And I did a video. You should show people the video so they can see it in action because you really have to see this to appreciate it. Press the button. And, so it's a it's a toaster oven. It's not. A, it's a toaster. It, so it has toasting, roasting, baking. It's a countertop oven. So okay. it will also double as a toaster oven. And so well, toaster ovens one, will do all of that too. Oh, well, that's true. Okay, yeah. so, but it's bigger than the average toaster oven, so you could fit up to a five-pound chicken in it. Okay. And I, I like the uh, countertop oven. I like the way it, yeah. So that was it saying, oh, my God, those are waffles, and I toasted it. They know, they see it, and they recognize did, it? Did you not see that in the video? It has a camera. It has wow. a camera with artificial intelligence, so computer vision. So it's pre-programmed recipes for things like when I put salmon fillets in there. It's it was the like, Tesla of ovens. It is. It, it was like, is this salmon or strudel? And then it cooked my salmon at 283 degrees because I said I wanted it medium. It knew. And it knew. It knew. It had the recipe in there. Um, the cool thing is, is uh, like if it knows what something is, it's like, boom, I got this. And if it doesn't, you basically, so I put in a pork roast and it had a bunch of vegetables around it. So it was like, I don't know what this is. So I was like, oh, there's presets. I went into the pork preset. I clicked it and it was like, what internal temperature do you want this cooked to? What I did is I took the uh. accompanying temperature probe. I jammed it in there. There are weights in the feet of the oven. So it knows exactly how much meat there wait, is. Wait a minute. It's, it's a scale? It's a scale. <laughs> so- Using all that information plus the temperature of the oven, it was like, all right. And then, you know, it, we're estimating that it's going to take like 45 minutes to cook this. And I'm like, cool. But then the internal temperature of the meat was rising faster, probably because there were vegetables in there too. Not so just it knew meat. that though. And it was like, oh, look, it already reached 150. You're good to go. And that was delicious. The downside is it's $1,500, a lot of money. I will tell you that my normal ovens are $1,500 each. I've got two of them. Had I known that this was coming out, I would have only gotten one and would have used this as my secondary oven for Thanksgiving and all the other times I'm using it. Um, and it's going to get updated over time. So mm. right now, like their cookie recipe was a little not great. Um, and it's because they were like, we set it for refrigerator store-bought cookies. So it was higher when they started. Like the temperature So it knows because they're in the refrigerator- that it yes. needs to start warmer and cool and heat yes. them up faster. So now it's going to ask you, they did a tweak. So it'll say, hey, are these homemade or store-bought? Nice. And if you say homemade, it's going to change it Nice. Yeah. So there you guys go. It was so good and it's so expensive. It's and really I can't buy expensive. one, Yeah. but I want one. My husband yeah. was, this is one of the only gadgets that my husband is like, holy cow, this is great. How long did it, you have it? it? I had it for a week and a half. Mm. Too bad it you made, couldn't keep it through Thanksgiving. I know. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so I just looked in my email and uh, I got yesterday, I got an email from June saying, uh, we're in mass production, which means you'll have your June oven on your countertop very soon. Over the next few weeks, June ovens will start to make their way to their distribution center in California and then they'll ship to the first pre-order customers. That's you. So I don't know when I'll get mine. I'm probably not in time for Thanksgiving, but I... No, probably December, I think, is what they're telling people. I'm telling but, you, Lisa thought I was insane when I told her how much No, it she is going to love it. Like, okay. Well, we it use is, our toaster is. oven all the time for everything because and, it's easier to use than in a big oven. Yeah. So even for like things like making chicken or French fries and stuff like that. And imagine like Blue Apron teaming up with them and creating yeah. recipes where you literally just like... I mean, I made dinner... Like during my lunch break, basically, I made various roasts and stuck it in the fridge. And then I just gave it to my husband and he can cook and follow instructions. But it was it was even better for him <laughs> like because he'd be like, he can follow instructions now. <laughs> like I've when I spatchcocked that chicken. Yeah. That was, I was Did that come out this. well uh, last, uh, last yes. time? Yeah. So, and I didn't have anything to do with it because I was doing the show. He put the chicken in, he jammed nice. that thermometer in there yeah. and he was like, it said roast chicken. Do you want it extra juicy, juicy, or 
well done. And oh, he did it. You were sneaky. You didn't tell us he was doing it in the June. I couldn't. I was under. Oh. No, that happens and all it, the time. It That's was delicious. Great. Is that it? Is that a spatchcock? That's, That's a spatchcock chicken right there. I mean, it should have been smushed flatter, but you can see it's a little. It's I mean, the enough. oven is it's smallish. You could you have it, to spatchcock great. it to get a, a big bird in there, probably. Yeah, yeah. you have to dismember it. I think. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you have to hack that sucker up and arrange it. Well, I bought it because of you. I should really give that $100 referral fee to you, but, you know, you still need 15 yeah. more to get one. Um, all right. Okay. Neat. J is it Juneoven.com? June.com? I think it's Juneoven.com. Let's see. Just Google Juneoven. Do what everybody. But gosh, help Leo out, man, you guys, so Lisa doesn't get so mad at him. You could go. He's got a referral link. Uh, it's juneoven.com. You save 100 bucks when you use that referral link. That's highly in inappropriate for me to do that. So I'm not going to I'm not going to flog that. I did it then, though. I regret doing it, but I did it. Oh, vegans, it makes the best kale chips. I roasted broccoli, I roasted potatoes, <laughs> mostly <laughs> mostly I love like I didn't cook any tofu, but I usually I, I like anything. the idea of roasting uh, uh, cauliflower and uh, roast vegetables are delicious. So if it does Can a good make, job of uh, that, Brussels sprouts happy. actually edible. Yes, actually, roast Brussels sprouts are delicious. <laughs> and and yes, it it is not for massive holiday baking for the people who right. are who are saying. Oh, this but it's is a for good like, secondary oven. You don't put your turkey in there, right. but you put your stuffing in there so that your stuffing you shouldn't cook in right. the turkey. That's unsanitary. But you put it in there, and then your stuffing's ready, and you don't have to. You can have separate. It's like having two ovens, one little I one, use my, one big one. Yeah, because I usually cook my meat in one oven, and then I have my secondary right. oven as all our vegetables or whatever's happening. Right. Cool. It will just, so, yeah. It is a little pricey, but I hope it's they do so well. Because I, I, you feel like it really was smart, like it's a smart oven. It is, it is smart and if you're a super advanced chef you can actually control the heating elements to your own specification so it's smart and it can grow with your cooking skills right. which i thought was pretty cool <laughs> um my stomach's been growing with my cooking skills so it's not that mm -hmm. not that hard to do uh and it, there's somebody in the chat room saying there is a, a hundred day uh trial so you could return it if oh you know, well hot diggity get it for thanksgiving and then send it back <laughs> get it, through the holidays and then send it back yeah. And it's a 16 by, oh, crikey. Uh, oh, it, it will only fit one nine or nine by 13 baking dish. Yes. So, so. It's, it is fairly small. It's, well, it's like, it's like toast. It's like a large toaster oven. Yes. Yeah. Jeff Jarvis, give us a number. So my number is Facebook's had a little problem with numbers lately. Mm -hmm. They've had two yes, spurts yeah. of, um, bad advertising results, bad advertising metrics, rather. Uh, the first, as we know, remember a while back, was that they um, were under over-reporting video plays. And then they had a whole bunch um, kind of boring stuff, but important to the ad industry. Uh, organic reach was miscalculated because it didn't dedupe de re repeat visits. Um, uh Organic reach pay metric uh, was uh, uh, will now include only viewable viewable impressions. There was an issue found with instant articles uh, that if overreported average uh, time spent by seven to eight percent. You add it all up, and there's some issues there. So Facebook's doing three things about it. One is they're launching a measurement council. Um, two is they're bringing in additional third-party verification measures, and three they're introducing and this will solve everything a blog. <laughs> uh, called Metrics FYI, a series of, about being upfront about this. So well, that's that when good. they discover bugs and discover errors, they will be more open about it, which is a good idea. That's good. So numbers, numbers, numbers. Patrick Delahanty says he has a number for you. 15,910, the number of total episodes on twit.tv <laughs> of all the shows Jeez. ever. Jeez. Wow. I'm on most of them. That's a lot of sh That's a lot of... There. That's a lot of Leo. There. That's a lot of Leo. I was going to say, that's a lot of hot air. <laughs> hey. I'm sorry. Hey. I know. It's okay. Now I deserve it. Uh, uh, you know, my pick is going to actually be an early pick because later this week we're going to review the new Apple uh, MacBook Pro. And uh, I'll have, you know, I just got it yesterday. We got a 13 and a 15 
Uh, we've been playing with them uh, ever since. We'll have a, a, a longer review on Saturday on the new screensavers. But I wanted to kind of mention, because I'd given Apple a hard time on this, that it wasn't innovative, that the uh, that there wasn't really the computer professionals were looking for the speed and so forth. And that's still true. I mean, any, any laptop that's tapped out at 16 gigabytes is really underpowered these days, 16 gig gigabytes of RAM. But there are a few bright lights here. It's a gorgeous screen it, it's it supports the p3 color gamut which means it's a, a very accurate screen as accurate as any screen sold for desktop or laptops uh today beautiful crisp bright uh and vivid colors uh i also was a little worried about the keyboard because it's, it looks like a duplicate of the macbook keyboard but and apple said well we've done a little bit something different and it is more clickety and I'm uh, thinking a little bit, for me, I did not like the MacBook keyboard. In fact, never really could use it well. I've already become accustomed uh, much more so to the new MacBook Pro keyboard. I feel like it's pretty good. The touch bar, which, of course, is the only real innovation in here, is very interesting. I love using my fingerprint to unlock the laptop. This is the first time for Apple. Certainly not the first time on a laptop. PCs have had this for probably a decade uh, it does also uh, do some interesting things when you launch apps from Apple. It's a it's programmable, so it changes and shifts and uh, gives you new commands. That's part of the thing I don't like about it is you have to look at it. You have to remember to look at it, and you can't touch type with it because it's different all the time. But having said that, there are a few useful things uh, you can do with it, and I think in time I might find it to be a very nice, useful adjunct. If Apple's not going to do a touchscreen, at least they've uh, got the touch bar. So a full review of the... New MacBook Pro. This is the 15-inch uh, this Saturday. I'll do the 13 as well this Saturday on the new screensavers. Lady and gentleman, it has been a pleasure to reunite with you and see you once again. As always. And uh, I think we did a pretty good job uh, today. I think so. Yes. No tears and were shed. No blood was shed. No shoes were thrown. I didn't get like tweeted uh, 20 times through the show talking about it, what, a, what a dork I am. <laughs> wow. We must really? have done something wrong. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis, go ahead. Uh, sometimes that tends to come in the email later after they think about it. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Jarvis will be uh, on uh, on the email later this week. No, Jeff Jarvis is at the CUNY uh, School of Journalism there at City University of New York, also at buzzmachine.com. Author of many great books, Gutenberg the Geek, we mentioned, Public Parts, What Would Google Do?, and Geeks Bearing Gifts is latest about uh, the news biz. And it's always a really great time with you. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Thank you, boss. Have you retired the Hillary gear? Is uh, it going to be in so a case? I tried wearing the, well, I don't know. I, so, so this arrived uh, the morning after the defeat. Oh, my God. <laughs> the refrigerator uh, magnet. <laughs> I bought my daughter, I don't think I'm going to give it to her, a Madam President button. Oh, that's... That's the that's the one where I really kind of feel sad is for all the all the women and girls who were looking forward to that glass ceiling. I won't show shot. you the one that I'm proudest of buying. Yeah, I can imagine what it says. It says F somebody, but there's this one. <laughs> I was at the rally, uh, so no, I still got it. So I, I, I wore the um, the safety pin for about three days, but then felt foolish, so I took that off. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I was thinking about wearing a safety pin too, and then I read an article on the Huffington Post that said. That's yeah. daft, and I kind of, yeah. it's condescending. Right. Daft was a good word, yes. And uh, and I I kind of agreed with it, and so uh, I just sent money to the ACLU and Southern Poverty yeah, Law Center anyway. instead. Stacy Higginbotham, always a pleasure from the People's Republic always. of Boston. Really nice to have you back. We did miss you. You can find her podcast at iotpodcast.com. She does that with our great friend and wonderful guy Kevin Tofel. And uh, also Stacy on IOT.com, at Giga Stacy on the Twitter. Thank you, Stacy. What are you having for dinner tonight? Uh, grapefruit salad and cornbread. At least you're having cornbread. Oh, grapefruit salad is delicious. <laughs> oh, you know why? Because it's 87 degrees in Austin. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I'd be eating grapefruit salad too. Nice. Thank you both for being here. Thank you all for being here. We do this week in Google every Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 19.30 UTC. If you want to stop by, say hi. Join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv or sit on one of these fine chairs. You can do that, too. Email tickets at twit.tv. But if you can't be here in person or on the stream 
in real time. You can always do it after the fact. On-demand audio and video at twit.tv slash twig, youtube.com slash thisweekandgoogle, or wherever you subscribe to podcasts. We're everywhere. Stitcher, Slacker, Google Play Music, and all the rest. In fact, you can listen on the Google Home as well as the Amazon Echo. Thanks for listening. Glad you were here. We'll see you next time on Twig. Bye-bye.